before God and he reads the profile on you down here on earth, what you've been listening to, how much time you've got, uh, uh, how much uh, time you've been listening. And then he measures it with how much grace you got left. And then he says, you know what? Uh, they grace is up. It's gone. They done. Take them off the earth. And then the, 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 the way you lived your life right now is what God going to judge you on. Out of the book of life. Out of the laws of God. Benji, you hey, back? Hey, hey yeah, yeah. read a poem. They don't believe that in Revelation 20, verse 11. Your paperwork come before God's desk. He punch your ticket, and then you got to go before his throne. Read that for him. The book of Revelation, chapter 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Keep reading. There you go. So a lot of people, you know, the the your judge your standard of what must be done in the eyes of God, that is based on the Bible. The words that are in this book is what you are being measured of by God of whether you are deserving of eternal life. And no, Christ didn't come to do away with that stuff. No, he did not come to die on a cross so you could dress like a whore. He did not come to die on a cross so you could sleep with another man, man on man, rod on rod action. No, he didn't die so you could eat pork chops and chitlins. He didn't die for that stuff. No, he died so you wouldn't have to sacrifice an animal anymore because the the, the place you going to, if you fight a pit bull, nigga, they put you in prison. <laughs> God said the place you going to, if you fight a pit bull, nigga, they going to put you in prison. I'm going to take this animal sacrifice out the way for you. And now your blood is on the line. It's going to be you that's going to have to meet the, to rise up to the standards. No more scapegoats. It's the it's you that is going to have to rise up to the standards. Read that in Romans 12 and 1 for the people. That is you that have to live up to the standards of God now. Ain't no more scapegoats. The Read that for them. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Boom. There you go. You the sacrifice now. A living sacrifice. That means that you got to do what? You got to give up the ways of the world. You got to give up the old man. You got to give up the lust. You got to give up the drugs. You got to give up the alcoholism. You got to give up the defiled foods. You got to give up the Easter. You got to give up the Christmas. You got to give up the birthdays. You got to give up your horoscopes. You got to give up the way you dress. You got to do all those things. You got to present your body as a living sacrifice. Keep reading. Holy, acceptable unto God. Hold on. Who's it got to be acceptable to? Acceptable unto God. Where does you find out what's acceptable to God? In the laws of God. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt, thou shalt not. That is what is acceptable. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, drop it. All right. Hey, let me get a script real quick just to go with ZB on that. Hebrews 11 and 6. So, like he said, it's got to be acceptable to the Lord. But guess what else got to be acceptable to the Lord? Your faith. Your faith. Let's see what God says about that. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Christian, what the hell are you going to do without faith? Because the, your whole life shows you don't have no faith. You do everything against God, and then you say you have faith, and you don't got to do no works. You just got to have faith. 
but you ain't even got that. You don't even have the faith to do what God told you to do. Because if you have faith, guess what you're going to do? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Keep the Sabbath day holy. I'm not going to eat pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster. I'm going to wear my fringes. If I'm a man, I'm going to have a beard on my face. If I'm a woman, I'm going to have a dress on. That shows you have faith. You understand? Read it again. But without faith, it is impossible. Without, to, without faith, it is impossible. To please him. You don't no matter what you do. You could be keeping the commandments and still not have the faith. You could be just going through the motions. Guess what? You can't please God. You understand? You don't believe. Read on. For he that cometh to God. Now, must, he that he that repents. Now you repent. Go ahead. Must believe that he must is. Must what? Must, must what? believe. You must that, believe. You got to believe. You got to have faith. You got to believe. Go ahead. That he is. Read. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's what you got to have faith in right there. That there is a reward for keeping the commandments. What's the reward? We read it in, in Revelation 20 and 11. You're going, to get the ki you're going to get the kingdom. But guess what? Your paperwork still is going to come out. When you did that evil, did you repent? When you did this, did you repent? You understand? There's a reward for you, and your reward is the kingdom. But do Christians really believe that? Absolutely not. Read it again from the top. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh-huh. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Must believe. You got to believe that he is. Read. And he that is a rewarder of them. And he them. is a rewarder of them. God is going to reward you with what? The kingdom of heaven. Everlasting life. Immortality. Go ahead. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we all got to diligently seek Christ through faith. You must have faith. And by faith, what are you going to do? You're going to perform the works. Hold that. J now let that go. James 2 and 17. The book James of James. 2 and 17. Yes, sir. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 17. Even so, faith. If it hath not works, is dead being alone. See what the Bible says? You can't just have the faith because you got to do the works. So by not doing the work, it shows you don't have faith, Christian. You understand? For all that, those that say you only got to have faith. Read it again. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So your faith is of is of none effect if you don't have any works behind your faith. Okay, read on. Yea. Read, read. Yes. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and read. I have works. Uh-huh. Show me thy faith without thy works. Christians, Christians, wait a minute. How can you show your faith if you ain't got no works? Behind your faith. That's what the Bible says. What, where's your faith if you ain't doing no work? You ain't got it. You're going to get that lake of fire we spoke about in 2nd Ezra 9, 9 and 7 on down. Go to the, go back to that real quick. Go back to that. I think it's verse 9. Mm -hmm. About the faith and works. Right. How are you going to get the kingdom? Give me that. Oh, uh, how are you going to escape? How are you going to escape the fire? Read. In Second Edges? Yeah, Second Edges yes. 9. Yes, sir. The book of Second Edges, chapter 9 and verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved. Uh, shall everyone, be saved. everyone, you want salvation? Well, guess what? Now we're going to read it. How you get the salvation? Read. And everyone that shall be saved and shall, and shall be able to escape by his works. So you got to have the works. You got to do the commandments. And by faith. And you got to believe 
on Christ. You got to believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Read. Whereby ye have believed. Whereby what? Whereby ye have believed. So if you don't believe, you're wasting your time. Go back and be a wicked nigga. Do something. Go back. You understand? You got to believe on Christ. And belief equals, a uh, 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 belief also goes into doing the commandments. Go back. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 18. Uh -huh. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. Uh-huh. And I will show thee my faith by my works. You see that? I'm going to show you that I'm a believer. I'm wearing my fringes. I keep the Sabbath day. I keep all the commandments. I don't eat pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster. I don't lie to my brother. I'm not deceitful with my brother. I don't steal. I don't rob. Guess what? I'm keeping the commandments. I'm going to show you my faith that I believe. Read on. Thou believest that there is one God. Uh -huh. Thou doest well. Uh -huh. the, the devils also believe and tremble. Read. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith jump to verse work. 20, jump, go, go, no, keep reading, keep reading. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Uh-huh. Was not Abraham our father justified jump to, by... Jump to 24 now. 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Damn! You see what the Bible says? You're justified by your works. Don't let a Christian believe... Uh, 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 um, deceive you that you ain't got to keep no works. You ain't got to do the commandments. That's just stupid. You understand? You can't have faith and say, oh, I just believe. I, you don't believe. A Christian that says he has faith only does not believe. He ain't got no faith. Read. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? Is that 24? Is that 24? Uh, no, I read. No, sir. That was. 24. I want you to read verse twenty-four. Yes, sir. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. See that you gotta have faith and works. You can't just have one without the other. You can't please God. You understand? Read on. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? Is that verse twenty-four? Read 24. Gotcha. All right, God, what are you doing, Rita? Come on. <laughs> I didn't tell you jump. What verse is that Rahab verse? I, you want to read that so bad, huh? No, that's, what that's, verse is Rahab? That's 25. Did I, I did not ask you to read 25. But go ahead. You want to read it so bad? Go ahead, brother. Read it. Likewise also was not Let's Rahab. Let's hear about Rahab, y'all. Was not Rahab what? Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? Rahab was justified by her works. She wasn't slaughtered, okay, when the Israelites came. She helped us, she helped us when we came to spy out the land, Joshua and Caleb, okay? And she was a heathen. That does not mean she's getting the kingdom. Read. Verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Hey, I got a question for everybody on the stage. Did I ask the brother to read back to 24? I thought we was reading about Rahab. Why the hell did he go back to 24? What the hell is going on tonight, man? What was going on today? Are you tired, brother? No, you been sir. Up all night? No. You been up all night, bro? No, sir. No, sir. How did, away. You get, how did you get back to 24? Hey, what Benjamin. What the hell is going on? The reader's yes. been horrible tonight. I think they're still on vacation, bro. Z had wow. to read his own scriptures. <laughs> the, the, the reader didn't even announce he was leaving. Yeah, we, yeah, I was we were just that. alone and the moderator. We lost the reader and the moderator at the same damn time. West Coast slacking, uh, Ayo. They slacking, man. East Coast always got to hold it down. What the hell? <laughs> Dallas, you ready now? Hey, I'm and I've been, I've been here with no sleep since 1 o'clock in the morning, bro. And I'm an old yeah. man. Damn, man. Dallas, you all right, bro? We need some coffee? No, no, I'm wide, coffee, awake. I'm wide awake. I got <laughs> okay. 
Let's go back to 20. You want you, you wanted to read about Rahab, so let's read about Rahab. We're not right. going back to 24. Let's read 25. All right. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? Uh-huh. When she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Uh-huh. For, as the, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Get this. Get this to a Christian now. A Christian can't handle this. As the, as the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works dead. You dead, dead, dead. So there's a lot of walking corpses around, around here. There's a lot of walking corpses in the world right here. You understand? Because all these Christians say they got faith, but they ain't doing a damn thing. No, hello, you got hello. faith in the white man. You got faith in Christmas, Easter, and birthdays, and Sunday worship. That's what you all got faith in. You do not have faith in the Lord. Read. That was it. All right, all praises. Hey, you know, um, but you know what? You know yeah. what's going on, Benjamin? You know what they thinking? They are thinking Galatians 2.16. Tell you that right now, it is Christians on stage or maybe even in the crowd at the bottom you know they always at the bottom listed you got to scroll to the bottom yeah they are listed say well no 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 galatians says read that galatians 2 16 yeah. 4. Yes. And, and we should ask them see if they got the, the the guts to come up and you know state their produce their cause oh yeah well anybody want to anybody want to come up on stage and and, and explain it's not about works yeah, somebody come explain. We ain't going we, we we respectful, you know. We just want to hear your your point of view. And if you're gonna tear you up in the script, biblical, that's it. If you're biblical, we can we can we can uh we can deal. You understand? So Christians, come on, man. Somebody explain Galatians to us. Go ahead, read it. The book of Galatians, chapter two and verse sixteen. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. There you go. I'm telling you. That's what they, you breaking that out, bitch. I'm telling you right now. They're like, he don't know what he's talking hey, about. Hey, hey, Paul hey, said you hey, ain't Z, justified. Z, check this out, though. That means if we're not justified by the law, works of the law, and that means the, the thou shalt not kill, don't steal, that means the laws of God, that means the Bible contradicts itself. And it's yep, something yep. wrong with the Bible. Oh, so, damn. So, You're right. That's what the topic of today so, is, right? Right. So which one is it? It's either you, because we can't have it both ways now, Christian. We cannot say the works of the Lord, we can't be justified when we just read it in James chapter 2, if that means the same thing. We're talking about the laws of God, which Christians are all going to say that's talking about the laws of God. You understand? So you cannot have it both ways. You can't say the Bible contradicts itself. Or you have to admit you don't understand that scripture. You can't have it both ways. So please, somebody come up and just show us. Hey, M, Kelvin, y'all ain't spoke on the stage, man. Christian's up here now and Auntie, Auntie's up here. What y'all right, think about those yet. old they scriptures? Right. If I won't come off if mute, there, man. Talk, if y'all trying to talk, you're on mute. Okay, you gotta you gotta hit the little icon button at the bottom right. All right, and come off of mute so you Hello? can hear you. Hello. There yes, you sir. go. Is it my turn, um, brothers? Uh, who's that? Mookie? That's Mookie? Yeah, Mookie. 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 Yeah, I got the Benji beatdown last time I came on. I got the Benji beatdown. It was a, out of righteousness. Uh, hello? Right, so can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, can you, do you know? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know the difference between those, or, or is it contradictory? There's no contradiction. The Lord that he's speaking about is the Lord's sacrifice. That's why you can't be judged by those words. The Lord's sacrifice, right, not the... All right, all right, all right, Mookie, Mookie, Mookie. Hold on, hold on. We want to we wanna speak to a Christian 
that can explain that from a Christian point of view. Oh, okay, I'm not, sorry. Yeah, no problem, brother. But we want to see I come what a got Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Stay on stage. Right. Thank you. We want to see what a what a how a Christian explains that we don't we're not justified by the laws of God. Okay. So, uh, who came up? Uh, Z. I just I just invited some people on stage. I Matt, just invited I just Matt. Mike, he just came on. Yeah, oh, let's see. Let's see. Wait, well, hey, let's hear what Matt got to say. You want to hear yeah. what Matt got to say, man? What's good? What's going on today? Come on, man. Hey, Galatians, read Galatians 2.16 for Matt. The book of Galatians, chapter 2 and verse 16. What are you, his, his puppet? Like, let him read it. Why you got to read it for him? You see? You see? You see? Esau starting already. Go ahead, Esau. Nah, nah, nah. You can't with... read him. Nah, I didn't know why you can't Esau! Read him. Esau, right, you right. don't run shit in this room. This is the way we do it. Hey, so right, we don't follow bear white supremacy, it. Esau. We don't follow white. We don't believe in white supremacy, Esau. You just got to deal with it. All right. All right. Cool. Galatians chapter two verse sixteen. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even when he, when even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. But by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Explain that. Uh, uh, what, what are we explaining? The verse. The verse is the verse. You take it literally, right? The words are the words. We don't interpret the words. What? <laughs> if you interpret the words, <laughs> if you interpret the words hey, hey. Uh, Hey, so how does how does John three sixteen mean God love everybody? Then, if you don't interpret the words, That's how does how who made John three sixteen mean that that makes that means everybody? Well, read who read interpreted it. That? Well, who, who's that? Who's that guy who's reading? He, read John three sixteen. Let's read it. White folk interpret it. White folk interpret. No, no, no. Let's read it. Let's read it. What does mean it everybody? Mean, what does it mean? Well, let's read it. We'll we'll tell the reader when to read, not you, Matt. Matthew, what no, does John three sixteen mean? It's a shame you got that name. Yeah, it's a damn shame. Hey, what does John three sixteen mean? Hey, What's Matt, weird? you know you named after a black man. Uh, you know you named. Name? You know you named after a black man. Nah. Hey, hold on. Yeah, hold on. yeah, Matthew was black. Hey, <laughs> go, go ahead, bitch. What, what does John Which one? Which mean? one? Wait, who was I named after? Listen, listen. What does John three sixteen mean? I don't know. I never read that. Oh, just like I thought. Esau don't know. Thank you for, for admitting that. Yeah. You all right, Esau. You all right. I'm all right. Hey, so, 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 this Auntie just fish. came on stage. Auntie just came on stage. And, uh, who else she said? Z, Matt? I mean, no, Kelvin. Kelvin, right? Kelvin. Can they explain Glacier to the scene or what? Such a huge hey Matt, you can mute up, bro. All right, cool. This ain't this ain't ready for you anyway. But you can mute up. Yeah, go ahead, no, Kelvin. Yeah, no, go ahead. no, no, no. I, I ain't no Christian. I'm I'm out of my friends right now. Go to the doctor's appointment. <laughs> all right, you all right. <laughs> all right. What about Auntie or Kristen? Or Dia, Sister Dia. Anybody, oh. anybody. Where y'all at? Um, Auntie, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Auntie no Noah's dead. Yeah, there you go. What what you think, Noah? No, no, I couldn't really hear. I was I was in the shower. I, I just I'm sorry. When y'all first was calling me, I ain't I, I could hear it, but I couldn't answer. Bro, I don't know what y'all was just asking just now. I just put my mic on so y'all can know I'm here. Yeah, man, we don't know you You in the shower, man. Don't be telling us that stuff, man. Shit. Cheer by, man. Dog, 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 because I'm just saying. <laughs> Read it again, man. Read it for him. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, 
that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. What you think that means, brother? I mean, I feel like you mean you can't fix what's written. Like you gotta, you gotta. You black folk be deep. They didn't say shit about fixing what's written. Y'all black folk be deep, man. No, I'm saying as far as like yeah, the works of the law, you can't you can't justify it. Like it's, I mean, it's 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 say what it means. So you saying that keeping the law won't fix that? And that's what that's saying. You won't be justified by the law. So it's saying the law won't fix that. That's what you said. No, I'm saying as far as what it, what it say by law, you can't change that or correct it in no type of way. Benji, translate, man. Man, I don't know what the hell he's saying. Hey, man, somebody, somebody in the chat, man, translate what he said to us, man. You know, these, these new uh, Generation Z got code words saying shit that ain't there. Translate for us, y'all. <laughs> somebody said he don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> I thought I knew as well. I'm lost. Damn. Uh, uh, Ezekiel got it. It is what it is. That's, <laughs> that's what he said. It is what it is. I mean, basically, but I thought what you meant by Ah, Ezekiel's right. Damn, you good, Ezekiel. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought what you meant by laws was like basically like the commandments. Um, I don't know what, what the other meaning for that could be. Uh, yeah, 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 all right, okay, all right, okay, so that's Noah, uh, Daya, you all heard Daya, was it me, Daya? I just had a question, shalom to the room. Uh, okay, all right, okay, uh, go ahead with your question, we'll come back to Galatians 2.16, since, uh, Noah said it is what it is, <laughs> and Matt, the damn Edomite, don't know what the hell is talking about either, go ahead, what's your question, sis? Well, my question is, um, AY was talking about purgatory, and I wanted to um, know about, ain't that a, like a Catholic belief, where you, when you die, your soul rests in a room and wait? So I wanted um, him to expound on that. Oh, God. What what did he say, sis, about it? I, I didn't hear. Well, he was saying something about you know um, your soul going to purgatory. So yes, it's it's Matthew chapter ten verse twenty eight. Read it for her again. Yes, the the book of Matthew chapter ten and verse twenty eight. And fear not them which kill the body, because someone could kill you, and that's it. It's over. Christ said, don't worry about dying. This is what you need to worry about. Read on. But are not able to kill the soul. Because your soul is what defines who you are. We're all on the phone speaking. What defines, I can't see you, you can't see me, but there is a soul inside of you that makes you who you are. A soul inside of me that makes me A1. So Christ is saying, focus on your soul. Why? Read on. But rather fear him which is God. God is the one that put the soul inside of you. Read on. Which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There's something that God could do spiritually to your soul that is going to be eternal. So that's what Christ said is the greater fear. Not the common death that happens when our body dies and it goes into the grave. The aftermath of your soul which is depicted again in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Read it, please. Revelation 20, verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. You're not going to be happy to be before the throne of God. You're going to be in terror and fear. Read on. And there was found no place for them. Because on the white man's court, they bang the gavel, all rise, you may be seated. Order in the court. 
In God's court, there's no place for you. You got to hold your tongue. Read on. And I saw the dead. The what? The dead. So this is again, you asked about purgatory. I gave you two depictions of what happens when your soul leaves your body and you are dead. It's not over when you die. Read on. Small and great. Whether he was Michael Jackson, the greatest pop entertainer that ever lived, or Prince, they were great on this earth. They went to the same place as the bum eating out the KFC garbage on the side of your block. Small or great, read on. Stand before God. Your spirit leaves your body and it got to go before the throne of God. Read on. And the books were opened. Because while you were on this earth, the angels were keeping records of your behavior. They have books on you. Read on. And another book was opened. Which is the Bible that you people neglect. You don't read. And that's why you're going to bleed. Read on. Which is the book of life. Because the Bible could save your life. It can save your soul if you follow the instructions. Read on. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So it's not just you die and that's it. Your soul goes before God and we're reading the documentation of what happens when your soul leaves your body and goes before the throne of God. There's a judgment that you have to stand before the Lord. Read on. According to their works. Whatever works you did, you're going to have to pay according to what God said. Read on. And, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So there's death and hell awaiting for you people that did not comply with God's laws. Read on. And they were judged, every man according to their works. He repeated it two times. When you die, when you whatever, however horrific death you have on this earth, your family's going to cry. He's gone. Oh, my God. He was a good man. Then there's not going to be no tears for you before God's throne. That's why it says everybody's going to be in fear, in awe of God. There'll be found no place for them. Now you have to answer to your creator who you ignored while you was on this earth. So I don't know where you got that. That's a Roman Catholic doctrine. Roman Catholics don't know the Bible. They will never, ever read this to you. They don't know this. <clears throat> now, I know where that saying comes from. That saying comes from black Hebrew Israelites. There is a black Hebrew Israelite that said, that's Roman Catholic doctrine because they teach you could do whatever you want. And when you die, you're going to come back and God is going to forgive you. That is not biblical. Let's prove it one more time. Give me, let's get Christ saying it out of his own mouth. Uh, give me... Uh, Mark, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Because the black Hebrew Israelites, when you show this to them, they say that's Roman Catholic doctrine. And ain't no Roman Catholic talking about this, what we're saying right here. Okay? Matthew chapter 30, 12, verse 32. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. Because a lot of y'all don't understand the Son of Man. So you there's forgiveness. And Paul spoke against the Son of Man, but then forgiveness was given to him. Read on. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, which is the laws and the understanding of God, read on. It shall not be forgiven. There is no forgiveness for that. You're going to pay ultimately. Read on. Neither in this world. Not in this world when you die. Read on. Neither in the world to come. Okay, neither in the world to come, because this place is going to be destroyed. So he's letting you know you're not getting away with it. You are marked for vengeance by God. Do you understand now, sister? Well, when I read Genesis, it says that Adam became a living soul. So isn't the body the soul? Let's get that what she said. Read it, please. Genesis yes. chapter 2, verse 7, I believe. Uh-huh. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That's how he became a living soul. When God gave him the understanding, the breath, 
Okay, that's why it tells you in, another, in the New Testament that for the men to get the understanding, Christ breathed on them. Get me that precept also, but read this, and then we'll go to where it says how the men become alive with the breath of God. It's just like the valley of the dry bones. It says there's no breath inside of them. The breath that goes inside of them is the understanding of God. That's what the story of the, the valley of the dry bones. You have no soul if you don't have the breath of God inside of you. That's what gives you life. Read it, please. Read it again. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, one more time. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. You are only alive when God puts the breath on you to bring you alive. Now let's get that in John chapter 20, verse 21. The book of John chapter 20 and verse 21. Uh, page ticket. And verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you start with verse 20 this is when he came back to life from the dead 20 verse 20 and when he had said and when he had so said he showed unto them his hands and his side because they didn't believe that he was brought back from the dead so he was showing them proof look at my hands look at my side read on then were the disciples glad when they saw the lord then said jesus to them again peace be unto you as my father hath sent me even so send I you. And what did he do after that? Read on. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So the breath that he put in Adam was a connection to the Father, the same way Christ had to put the breath inside of the disciples to connect them back to the Father. The Holy Ghost, which is the true spirit, is what connects you to the Father. Now give me the scripture in Proverbs uh that is in the congregation of the dead. Yes. Okay? This is how you be, how you lose the breath of God and you're no longer a living soul, which is why Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. Those are the people who are not spiritually connected to God. They're walking around, but they're spiritually dead. Read that, please. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Which is by Christ had to breathe the understanding to the disciples, why God had to breathe the understanding to Adam. When you wander out of the understanding of God, read on. Shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Which is black America. You are the congregation of the dead. You've been in the church, in the Sunday church, you know nothing concerning God. You are the walking dead. Give me, um, when Christ called the man to come in, and minister with him, and he said, let me go bury my father first. Luke 16, I think. Uh, let me see. L Matthew chapter 8, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, and verse 21. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Because he wanted to put off ministering to the people, to deal with a funeral. And look what Christ said. Read on. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Because there's people who are spiritually dead. It's the same thing with us when we're in this clubhouse room. We're breathing the breath of life into them with the understanding of God. So I gave you analogies of Adam being bred with the rest of, with the breath of life. I gave you an analogies of Christ breathing on the disciples to give them the breath of life. And I showed you the analogy of people who don't have the commandments of God. They're in the congregation of the dead. Does that clear it up for you, sister? Or do you need more precepts? Um, yeah, I still got to wrap my head around it. I'm around what? What did you I, not understand? Out of um, uh, this Saturday church too. And I'm still in the process of learning all over again, put it that way. So, Oh, so you're in a Christian church. That's what you said? No, I'm not in a Christian, a Christian church. What church you in? Uh, I came out of IOG. Oh, that's like one of the worst Israelite camps they are. <laughs> 
they hate us. Okay, he, he's the, he's the one that said he's the one that said. He threw people out of his church for putting fringes on. I got members of his church with us. He said, ain't none of y'all coming inside here with them things on your shirt. I know exactly who that man is, and he does not know the Bible. Okay? He's a he's a Christian a passing as an Israelite. And that's why I'm coming out of IOG. Because all I, praises, all I praises. I still in Christianity. So. Yes, he, he mixes up a lot of things. He is one of the worst Israelite teachers I've ever come across. I would say he worst. Our, yes, I, sister, yes, I would. I would. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, I guarantee you that whatever he taught you, I could dismantle it right here. I've listened to his teachings. I have members who have left his church, and they're following us. So I'm very familiar with Pastor Bowie, his name is, right? Yeah, that's him. Okay, right. I'm very familiar with him. He's been talking crap about us for a long time. And I've watched that man, and he butchers the Bible. He butchers the Bible. The only thing that he has is the allure for black people of the Israelite teachings, but he's not teaching them as it is written. Okay? And the and the crazy thing that you that it's crazy that you say that because um I have family members that's Israelites and I've been in this since I was eight and that uh, you know I kind of veered away and they say the same thing they say that I'm playing church so <laughs> yes that's what he's doing he's playing church for him to forbid people to wear for you never heard him say he don't want no fringes in his congregation. Yeah, I heard that I have family okay. that, say that, that is in law that you That's should wear fringes, but I kind of see what he's trying to say about fringes. Which is what? What did he say? Well, it's just that he, you know, since the Messiah died and the new covenant that 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 was taken. Christ had fringes. fringes on his garment, sister. Do you know that? That's why it said that the people touched the hem of his garment. A and woman touched the fringes that. for healing. Yeah, I do the Strong's um, Concordance, and I've, I've read that that his tassel, that's pretty much fringes. Yes, I've, I've heard his, his argument for not wearing fringes, and it makes absolute, it's no biblical uh, scripture to substantiate what he's saying. The, the fringes are spiritual. And they are to keep your mind on keeping the commandments of God. That's what they're for. They're for spiritual protection. On top of A1 that it says that um, in Christ, he did no sin. One of the law of God is that you put fringes upon the borders of your garment. Christ did no sin. So that means he kept that law of fringe upon his clothes. And, and uh, also, also, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Because Pastor Bowie teaches we don't have to do it anymore. Can we get that Numbers chapter 15, verse 38? Let's see if God said that we don't have to do it no more. Read that, please. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. What? Say that again? Throughout their generation. Does it have an S on the end of generations? G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O-N-S. Because Pastor Bowie teaches it's just for that time. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribband of blue. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So this is to keep your mind spiritually connected to the commandments of God. So Pastor Bowie, don't keep no commandments, sis. That's why he says, look, we don't need those. Who gave him the authority to tell people you don't have to wear them no more? Is that it on that? And that ye seek not after your own heart. And Which is what mind. Pastor Bowie's doing. Pastor Bowie is uh, speaking out of his own heart. Read on. And your own eyes. And his own eyes. What he feels is right. Read on. After which ye used to go a whoring. So he's whoring after what the world says and making things up that's not biblical. Okay? And I've challenged him on that. 
but all he does is ridicule us and threaten his congregation that they can't put them on, and if he catches anybody with them, they'll be ushered out. And I know people who has happened to. That's not biblical what he's teaching. Okay? Hey, I'll tell you that, A1, that's a lack of faith. That's what that is. You're afraid to put on them fringes because these fringes and a border of blue signifies to the world that you are the children of God. Okay, that's spiritual. So, um, like I said, sis, all praises, the Lord is working on your spirit to get out of there. But he's a Christian pastor with an Israelite twist. The same thing with GOCC. Okay, the same thing with that other guy uh, that defends white people on the farm. What's uh, Dow, Dow, Pastor, Pastor Dow. No difference, no difference. Okay, goes against everything the Bible says about Edomites. And says we're twisting the scriptures with nothing to back what he's saying. So these people are uh, Israelites, are Christians with an Israelite twist on them. Okay, they're making things up that's not biblical. So all praises, sis. I'm glad that you at least found a room. You can ask your questions. That's what we're here for. We're here every day except for Saturday night and Friday night. But we're here every single day. And pretty much, it's, it's, shit, it's afternoon time now. We've been on since 9 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> okay? And ain't no room doing what we're doing on any app the way we're doing it. I mute my mic. Right now, you're going to do what I say do. Hey, can I ask A1, A1 a question? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay, now, it wasn't that really the I was going to know, do y'all, do you, do you have, like, a number, like, if a brother needed some counseling on a certain subject? What are you doing here? What state are you in? I, uh, I'm in New York. This... Why you ain't come to the school? No, nah, I go to the school. Oh, yeah. Okay, just let them know you want counseling. Like There's plenty of people there that can help you. Now I'm saying, but what if I wanted to, like, because you, you seem like you, you, you really hit certain target points. Uh, like, I would have to do, get anybody or I, I like, kind of, like, pick no, and choose. Just, or... just speak to the men there. If they can't help you, just tell them, look, I spoke to A1, I need help, and we'll escalate the matter from there. Okay, great. All right? All right. All right, thank you. All right, brother. All right, brother. Shalom. Shalom. He's watching a good show back there. Hey, and those are just three. Uh, Pastor Bowie, Dow, and GOCC. They're just three. There's many more uh, Christian church that's now seeing the allure of the Israelite teaching, and they're putting that twist on there to, uh, to, to get people. Be, you hearing that you are the chosen people of God, okay? People are like, I want to join that group. This is what Christ warned about that. Uh, give me... Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, and verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you the way you wanted to be treated by men read on do ye even so to them so we're supposed to care about each other in this truth not take advantage of each other and there's a lot of israelite groups that they're taking advantage of the people read on for this is the law and the prophet it's a law that you're supposed to care about your congregation and a lot of these pastors do not care about the congregation i would never tell the people if Moses was told, remember, can we go back to Numbers chapter 15, 38 and see why the fringes were implemented? Go a little bit up to where uh, the man broke the law. And then they had to ask God, what should we do? The book of Numbers chapter 15 and verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Because on the Sabbath day, you were supposed to rest. And this man didn't take the Sabbath serious. He didn't know. Read on. And they found him gathering sticks. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses. And so they, they looked out their window. Yo, is that Tyrone over there? Why is this nigga out of his house in the back picking up sticks? 
So if you could imagine them calling each other and saying, hey, didn't we talk to you the other day, Tyrochius? Bring your block behind here. Come on. We're going to go talk to Moses now. Read on. And unto all the congregation. And all the congregation came now because this is when the laws were given to them. And God was showing them, y'all need to stop playing with me. Read on. And they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him. That's where you get a prison ward from. Inward meaning that they contained him. They restricted his movement. Read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. God said, kill this nigra and make an example out of Tyrochius. Read on. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And I wanted to be an Israelite stoning party. Read on. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. Because Tyrochius was a troublemaker. Read on. As the Lord commanded Moses. Read on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So wait, 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 wait. We always leave this part off. The fringes was to keep you niggers from being put to death. Now Pastor Bowie is saying we don't need them. Okay, Tyrochius forgot the laws. So he came out of his house like a nut job from Harlem, walking around picking up sticks in the hood. They saw he was up to no good. So God said to make sure this don't happen again, let's have a reminder for these people to keep the laws. So I don't know how Pastor Bowie could be like, look, we don't need them no more. He got to show me the scripture. That makes absolutely no sense when they were implemented so that people don't make things up. If you, if the thought comes into your head to go against God, you look at your fringes or your, it should, it should make you say, you know what? I got these on for a reason. It's spiritual protection. It's a reminder to keep your mind on the laws of God. I'm here, my mic. Hey, I want to back you up on that A1 because this is this is probably what they're using. Get that in Hebrews 8. And we're going to show you that this time is not right now. You, we still have to have our fringes on because, as Christ said, the fringes upon our clothing is a light to our people in a dark place, which is America. This place that is full of sin. And our brothers and sisters that wear these fringes can attest. That when other people see our fringes, they know that we are different. They see the light that is shining in the dark place. And they don't know how to comprehend it. They don't know what they are. They don't know why they got them on. They look strange. Black folk with fringes on the clothes. Woman with a head wrap and a dress on and a border of blue. I don't know what to make of this, but I know that it is different. Hey, That's the light. They don't comprehend it. How yes, sir. Come, how come they don't never tell the Arab woman, don't wear the jihad? Okay. There you go. They don't never. Right. For us now, something that defines who we are and connects us to God, you got niggers telling us don't put it on. But you, the stuff that have no connection to God, that the Arabs is wearing it, they wearing it proudly. In New York, yep. some of them only got their eyes showing. A, there's a new, a new group of them in the neighborhood where I am where not even the eyes show no more. I don't even know how they see through it. Damn. Okay? Totally, and they wear it with pride. But now we find something to connect us back to the father, and a nigger is saying, don't put it on. That's crazy, bro. But go ahead, Z. Yep. Crazy. Um, Get that scripture, Hebrews 8, and show you that that time is not now, that we got to wear the, the clothing that God commanded us as a remembrance keep read that for him yes sir you want verse 8 or 10 yeah we'll start it we'll start at 8 and go down okay the book of hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8 for finding fault with them he said behold the days come saith the lord when i will make a new covenant with the house of israel and with the house of Ju of judah i wanted to start there for the people that may never heard that the new covenant under christ him dying is only for the house of Israel. It's not for all nations. That new covenant Christ shed in his blood was never meant to grant access to any other people on earth outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. 
the new covenant according to Paul, who wrote Hebrews to the to the Pharisees that were in Jerusalem. He wrote this to them, explaining the new covenant. Read it again for them. But finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days cometh, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's who the new covenant's for, brothers and sisters. It's not for all nations. Christ is for the 12 tribes of Israel, not for all mankind. Keep reading. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Because they now check this out. We all know the old covenant. We everybody know that old covenant was for the Israelites. Right? Christianity understands the old covenant was for Israelites, and but they teach that Christ came to bring a new covenant for all people. Well, God's not saying that in context. He's saying the new covenant is for Israel because I don't want them to be under the old covenant that I made with them when I came when they came out of Egypt. New old covenant, new covenant is for one nation of people. That's us. Black folk, Hispanics, Native Americans scattered everywhere. We, the Israelites, in the new covenant for us to come back to Christ, come back to God. Now keep reading. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Uh huh. But this, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. After those days, saith the Lord, what is he going to do? I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their heart. See, that's what they use in A1. I guarantee you that's what he's using, that they don't have to wear the fringes no more because the laws are in our mind now. Well, here's the proof that the laws ain't in our mind. Watch this. Keep reading. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Uh-huh. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor. Boom. There you go. That's how we know that that has not happened. Are we teaching? Are, is Pastor Bowie still teaching people the Bible in his congregation? Yes. That means that the laws of God are not yet written in our mind and in our spirit to where you don't think about sin no more. You ain't got to fight the flesh no more. That's when the kingdom comes and you've been transformed uh, from that fleshly body to a spiritual body. So that means until that time, Guess what you got to wear on your clothing to remember the commandments of God like we just read back in Numbers 15. That means you have to wear the fringes and a border of blue. Go ahead, Benjamin. You going to say something? Hey, I was just going to say, I guarantee they use Hebrews 7 and 11 also about the temple, the temple laws. I, I guarantee they mix that up. The temple, the, the laws pertaining to the temple. Read that real quick. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What under it the people received the law. Go ahead. What further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek? That scripture about the law, I guarantee they mixed that up too. And use that to justify not wearing fringes, the changing of the law. That changing of the law is the law of sacrifice. It's not talking about fringes, thou shalt not kill, don't steal. It's not talking about that. But what a Christian does is they use anything they can to justify their sin. That's what Christians do. Go, go to 1 Timothy 4 real quick. Is it 4 and 1? Itching ears. Uh, and that's what our people do. They find scriptures to justify their sin. Okay, and that's what Pastor Bowie's doing. If it's biblical, why not just do it? That's what we got to ask Pastor Bowie. If it's in the Bible, why not just do it? Hey. You say you believe, you say you're, a, you're an Israelite, why not? Benjamin, I got a better question. Why does he have hatred against it to the point where why would you stop people who want to put it on? Right. That's the real question. Why would you throw people out for doing something that our forefathers did in the Bible? 
You, you know why AO? Because he hates our guts. That's ah, that's he hates. He okay. Hates us. <laughs> hey, the first time that I found out about him, a member had came to me because she didn't know nothing about nobody in no purple. And she came to me and told me he keeps mentioning you guys. So I decided to check out what y'all was talking about. And the minute that I was questioning about the fringes, they threatened me. So she said she left on her own. But why the hatred for the fringes? Only because we're the ones that's showing you in the Bible to bring it out. And that's how black people are. They want ultimate control over you. So if somebody else is saying something that threatens their power over you, they respond with disdain. Why the hatred? I'm not going to be mad if people come into my church and they have it on. I'm, what, what, what justification would I use to tell the ushers to put them out? It's because he's afraid of any spiritual connection to our teachings coming into his church. So that's why he responds with such disdain. But they'll put on a suit and tie and put the white man's tie around their neck. That's not nothing. They'll, they'll just call it European, no European cut, too. Euro A1, right. European, European cut. European cut. What the white man implemented when they forced us to leave our heritage and our culture and our identity. He'll proudly wear the white man's tie around his neck, which is a phallic symbol. Okay? And, and, and there's other writings that show it's their dominance, their control over us as a noose. They're fine with putting that on. But the biblical stuff of God that our forefathers wore, he got a problem with it. Man, Negro, please, I'll mute my mic. And get that, get that for me, Matthew 5, verse 17. Because this is what we have to stop doing is, is putting man above God just because man is in front of your face. Yes. Did y'all still That's what we got to stop doing. What you what you say, Dallas? Did y'all still want the second Timothy four and three? The itching ears? Oh yeah, yeah. That's for Benji. Go ahead, Benji. You still there? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Bro, yeah I got it. The book of Second Timothy, chapter four and verse three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is the laws of God. Get that in. Uh, what is that? Is that Proverbs 4 and 4 or 4 and 2 to show what sound the doctrine is? People, when they hear this, they won't endure it. They won't sit there to continue to learn and apply. Keep Read that, Proverbs 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. That's the doctrine of the Bible. That's the doctrine of God, the laws. And he tells you he's giving you good doctrine. The laws of God are good for us when we apply those in our life. They can change your health when you eat the dietary, the way God told you to eat in his dietary law, Leviticus chapter 11. The way you dress, it can change the spirit that is within you, make you more feminine as a woman, make you more manly as a man. It can make you uh, more honorable. Give you self-esteem. Loving your neighbor as yourself brings peace in your life. Uh, honor in marriage and not uh, whoremongering and adultery. It, it's peace in your life, in your in your household. Your children honoring their mother and their, their father and their mother. It brings peace to you as a parent. A child is raised up in the way that he should go. This is good doctrine for you. And God said, don't forsake it. Now go back to that in Timothy. So now we know that the doctrine that they won't uh, uh, forbear. Read it again. Second Timothy chapter four and verse three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't endure the commandments. When they hear it, the fleshly desires of them will say, nope, I don't like this doctrine, this teaching. And what do they do? Keep reading. But. After their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's in the Christian church. That's with Israelite camps. That's why a lot of people won't join Israel United in Christ. Because they know damn well Israel United in Christ. They stand on the law of God. And the faith in Jesus the Christ. And they ain't budging for it. They are doing thus saith the Lord. If it's in the Bible and it's written, 
and God commands us to do that under the new covenant, we that's the way women in dresses, beards on your face, fringes on your clothes, Sabbath day, sundown to sundown, seventh day of the week, we are doing those things and we ain't budging. God don't want no Edomites amongst us or, or no damn uh, uh, Chinese folk or no A. He don't want them amongst us as he's rebuilding uh, us as a nation. He don't want them amongst us. They will not be amongst us in our congregations. They can hey, live, you know, our, our people live in that area, but I'm I talking about Ish, Ishmael kids ain't going to be sitting amongst us. Go ahead, A1. Let, let A1 uh, bring it out first. Then we'll go to Go ahead. Wait, wait, let's get his question. What's your question? Yeah, I had a, a question about the um, uh, uh, Asian people not joining the congregation. Um, I believe it's on Deuteronomy 27. But you said Asian people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your question about it? Um, I'm confused on, on the scripture, basically, because it says um, that they cannot join the congregation um, uh, forever. And then on the last verse, it says that up to the uh, 13th, third generation. No, it says 10th. Right. Deuteronomy 23rd. I'm sorry. Right. Uh, something right at, it says something right after that. It's a word that you're missing. Go ahead and read it for me. 27. Let's read verse 1 and uh, 2 and 3, I think it is. Is it 27? Uh, 23. Yeah, it might be Deuteronomy 23 or it might be Deuteronomy 27. It's the first verse. I mean, uh, first verse. It's, it's in the first two verses of three. Verses. Okay. Just start it right. from the top. Yeah, here it is here. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 1. Uh, start at 23. Uh, 20, uh, verse 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the no, Lord. No, no, start at 1. Start at 1. At 1. He that is wounded in the stones, or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Yep, that was, that was eunuchs. Those was eunuchs. Can't enter in. Right? This is going back to why God removed the sacrifice because it was a host of other things that went along with that sacrifice before you could bring it to him. Go ahead. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So a bastard, that means that you was born of a whore. That's what that means. Your mama was out here a whore. <laughs> you couldn't come into the congregation of the Lord. Go ahead. Even to his 10th generation, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now, here's the point right here about uh, what Asian folk are now, which is Japanese and Chinese people. They are Ammon and Moab in the Bible. Go ahead. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their 13th, even to their 10th generation, shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever boom that's the key word you was missing brother it said forever it's a tip generation and beyond they can't come in this bit it don't god don't care how long it is they can't enter in among you and then he gives you the reason because god is a just guy he's going to explain to you his his thinking process verse four because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came out of egypt and because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, of, P of Pithor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. There you go. See, what in Numbers chapter 24, 23, 24, it's a whole uh, um, history of where they hired a witch to try to curse us from going into the promised land. And God said he don't forget. This is what we we have we have uh, think that God forgets and forgives other nations. He does not. He does not forgive, and he does not forget anything that anybody has ever done to his children. He gonna get their ass. And for them, for Moab and Ammon, which are the Chinese 
and the Japanese people today. That's their biblical name. God said they can never come amongst you. Ever. Hey, um, the sister that was from Pastor Bowie's church, are you still there, sis? Yes. Um, what does he teach about Caucasians? Are they in the church? Are they in the congregation? Yeah, they're in the church, but they teach. Damn! <laughs> Sis, you know they're not supposed to come into the church. The Bible makes it clear they're not supposed to come in. That's why he wears the suits, and he don't want any presence of the fringes because he knows that that's what furthered the Israelite movement. Okay, you men remember... When we first started putting them on our clothes in early 2005, 6, 7, 8, they wasn't known all throughout the world. Now they're on Amazon. They're selling shirts with fringes. We changed the face of the world with the fringes. Everybody knows us. They call us the fringe group. So that's why Pastor Bowie don't want them in there because they don't want no presence of the uh, black teachings, the power that's equated with it. So that's why they'll keep the suit on, okay? That's why white America respects that. And that's why he wears those clothing and he keeps that dress code and he don't want that coming in there because he don't want no, no presence of how we are impacting the world to scare off his white participants in his establishment. Now watch this. Give me Zephaniah chapter uh, 1 verse 2. Watch this. For any of you that's, that's lining up with that thought of I ain't wearing no fringes, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 2. The book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 2. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. Read that one more time. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. Because God don't like the way the world is fashioned now. Read on. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea, and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. Because to tell people not to put fringes on, that is a stumbling block. It is something to make you stumble at the word of God. And he says that that's going to come from the wicked. Read on. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. And I will stretch out my hand upon Judah. And upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Because Judah is the top tribe. Judah is the one that's supposed to set precedent. Read on. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. Baal is another word for the devil. Read on. And the name of the Shemarims with the priests. Okay, because you priests bring things into the temple of God that's not supposed to. You have different names and different identities. Okay, that is outside of the standard of what God has set forth for us as his people. Read on. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. To worship the host of heaven is something outside of God. You're hosting a different individual in the place of God. Read on. And them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm. And them that are turned back from the Lord. Because some people are turned back from the Lord, but they're swearing by the Lord. They're swearing in the church that they're Israelites, but their actions say different. They're turned back from the Lord. Read on. And those that have not sought the Lord. And those Lord. that have not sought. We sought out the Lord and said, look, brothers, you need to grow your beard. You need to put fringes on. Sisters, you need to wear a dress or a skirt. You're watching us diligently seek the Lord and not going with the mainstream. Read on. Nor inquired for him. We're inquiring for God. God, what do you want us to do to connect back with you? Read on. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. So God says, shut up when it comes to challenging me. Read on. For the day of the Lord is at hand. Uh, the day of the Lord is judgment. So he said, be quiet because the day of the Lord is coming. Read on. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day when God brings judgment to the earth. Read on. That I will punish the princes and the king's children 
and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. You should be moved with fear that God says, I'm going to get everybody that's following a dress code outside of what God has ordained for his people. He says, I'm going to target those people in strange apparel. The clothing that Pastor Bowie wears is not Israelite tradition. The white man's suit and tie, okay? He puts that on to please them and be in accordance with them. Our forefathers wore garments. There's pictures, there's books, there's documentation of it. He got the money to do the research like we did the research. Okay, so the people there that's being misled, like when we tell the woman, sister, you're not supposed to wear jeans, you're not supposed to wear pants, that's, uh, you got that from the white man, okay? If you speak to the generations of black women that was here, my grandmother never wore no pants. That was not her custom. You speak to the generations before, that's a new thing in America. But some sisters, they want to show their ass, and they love America, so they can't see them. So I had a sister tell me, I ain't never wore no dress or no skirt. Okay, she says she always got, if you know her, she got skin tight jeans to show the crack of her ass. That's strange apparel with God. A necktie is strange apparel with God. Okay, now if you're not aware to work, that's different. But when you're to serve God, it's not with no suit and tie or no skin tight jeans or no mini skirt in no church. So he's forbidding the people to put the fringes on that our forefathers wore in the Bible, but he's allowing them to wear the white man's strange apparel into the church. I mute my mic. Yes. I still have a question about De Deuteronomy 23, uh, verse 8, about the uh, Asian folks. Because uh, I believe at the end of that that chapter it says that they can join the congregation up to the third uh, third generation, but it doesn't. Maybe I'm not understanding, but I don't understand the context of which people. But then again, before it says um, uh, forever, and then and some and some it says ten generations. Yes, at that time he says that those kids need to die off. Okay, eventually they'll be around us, okay, because they're going to serve us. They're going to be servants to the Israelites. The Israelites had servants, but at that time, he says, those ones need to die off. Those generations need to die off. God want nothing to do with them. But there's scriptures like uh, Benjamin Paul to show you that God has them slated for judgment. Okay, when we left out of Israel, there was a mixed multitude. And then God started to slowly tell us, like in, in uh, Ezra, they, Ezra had to beat the priests because they were marrying them. Solomon was having sex with them. So eventually God said to move them away from us. So the time that you're talking about is when we just came out the wilderness. Okay, but eventually as you read on, God says, I don't want you dealing with them. I don't want them around us. They're mark for judgment because they tried to curse us. What you're reading here is before judges when they hired a witch to curse us. And that's when God condemned them. So you're reading history before when we were in the wilderness. We were still in the wilderness in Deuteronomy. We did not come into the promised land. In the promised land, God said, I don't want them around y'all forever. Okay, so at Deuteronomy 27, let's read that real quick. Verse 7. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 27 and verse... 23, verse 7. 23, verse 7. 23, 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. The God, God told us not to have no beef with them. Okay, then go to Malachi chapter 1, verse 1. Things change. We were still in the wilderness. He said, don't have no hatred for them. They're your biological brother. Now Malachi 1, verse 1. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob 
and I hated Esau. So he tells us not to hate them in 23 verse 7, but the last book of the Old Testament, he's displaying his hatred for them, and he's going to tell you why. Read on. That And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Because eventually they were around us. Now it says that they're in the mountains. Okay, that's what Caucasian means. It means dwellers in caves. They didn't originally live in caves, but in the book of Job, it tells you that we cried after them as after a thief. We moved them away from us when we saw how evil they was. Read on. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and fill the desolate places. And how do they do it? From the blood, sweat, and tears of the Israelites. They round you up based on your black skin and they enslaved you, raped you, robbed you, and pillaged you and destroyed you. So that's how they rebuilt their desolate places. Read on. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. But this is what God has to say to their rebuilding. Read on. They shall build, but I will throw down. Whatever they build in the future, God is going to destroy. Read on. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Wickedness begins with them. That's why I tell you in the book of Revelation, mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. The Israelites didn't know that they were so wicked yet. It took time for their wickedness to progress on this earth and bring it to destruction like they're going to do now. There are the reasons why a nuclear war is coming. Okay? Did y'all not watch the movie Oppen Oppenheimer? The white man said, I become a destroyer of worlds. So at that time in the wilderness, they didn't do nothing. There was no reason to have no beef with them. But as time evolved, they became the most wicked, vile people on the face of the earth. God is going to say it. Read it again. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. They, wickedness, border is the beginning. Wickedness begins with them. Read on. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. God said he's going to hate them forever. Now get your Zondervan Bible dictionary to prove that the scholars searched the Bible and they disregarded Deut oh, Deuteronomy 23 verse 7 where it says thou shalt not abhor Edomite. Then they realized down the line God had them marked for death. They were not a problem in the wilderness. You don't read about them having no issues with us. Okay, you even read that Esau and Jacob made up. It said that they hugged each other and they kissed. But as generations of them grew and they multiplied as a nation, they became the border of wickedness and the people who God has indignation against forever. Read it, please. Zondervan's Edom. Edom figures. Quote the page. Quote the page number. Uh, Zondervan's. Compact Bible Dictionary, page 142. Edom. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures. The scriptures of the future. Prophecy, prophecy. Even the scholars say in the prophetic scriptures, things change for them. What you read in Deuteronomy in the beginning, thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, it changed for them. Read on. As the scene of great future judgment. God has great future judgment for them, not in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. They were not an issue then. They were small at that time. Read on. She is the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any promise of mercy from God. So you know, a lot of people keep going to Deuteronomy 23, verse 7. That was thousands of years ago, and it is irrelevant. They were not a great nation. They did not put us on cargo slave ships. They was not destroying the earth, the ozone layer, the water, the economy, the school system, the TV, the media, the music. They were not a problem. Okay, but things change. So a lot of you Christians and you people that want to defend them, you always run back to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7, with no historical account of what took place afterwards. I mute my mic. You know that also let you know that also let you know that the white man knows Esau is still on the earth as a people. Hey, and you that know thing why? said great future judgments. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. And you know why, Z? All of a sudden they're mad when you call them that. There wasn't no Christian church talking about no Esau right. or Edom until the Israelite movement started. Now they're adamantly denying that they are not them. 
<laughs> right. They are the worst thing you could call, you could call them cracker, you could call them honky, you could call them mayonnaise, you could call them white bread, they'll laugh at you. Call them Esau now and watch how mad they get. Yep. Yep, they know. <laughs> they know that we, we have figured them out. God has revealed who they are. That's what it say in uh uh um get that in Thessalonians for for the people to show them yes, sir. that hey, that was what God was going to do. There's people right in the chat. They never heard or read about Esau in a Christian church all their life. Who brought? No, nah, I never heard of him. Okay, I definitely did out? not. The prophets of God brought it out. That's the yes, prophets sir. of God. God put a spirit on His prophets to search them out because it tells in in, in Revelation it calls them. Babylon mystery. Okay. Mm -hmm. The man of perdition had to be revealed. How were they revealed? God looked into the future and saw the things that they were going to do, the atrocities. So that's why they're marked for judgment. They're not marked for judgment because we don't like them. We don't we, we don't say that we hate them. We say God is the one that hates them. But they put right. the finger at us. We don't teach our congregation to hate uh white people or any race. We don't teach any of our congregation to hate people, but we teach as it is written. Christ right. said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Y'all want to hold on to the lie? You're going to die. Go ahead, Z. Bars. Read that for him. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3, I believe it is. Yes, sir. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. Except they come a, a falling away first. Now, read. Now, remember, Paul said that. I mean, Christ said that too in Matthew twenty-four about let no man deceive you. You got to understand they are writing in code because the people that are ruling over them are Romans, which who the Americans are descendants of the Romans. They white folk on that side they call themselves Romans. On this side they call themselves Americans. Same people. That's why here in America, there's Roman architecture everywhere. The names of the days of the week are Roman gods. The, you got the Roman numeral system. You got the Roman text. All of this stuff is Rome on the different side of the earth. Paul said, let no man deceive you because they will try to deceive you in who they are not. But what happened? Keep reading. Except there come a falling away first. And that was man. us going into slavery. We had to go into slavery and be brought on this side of the earth. We had to be brought on this side of earth so that the wicked can be revealed. And you will be able to understand it and tie it together when the time came for it to be exposed to you. Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. There you go. The man of sin be revealed. Who is he? The son of perdition. The son of destruction. He's the son of Satan. And now read the next verse so Paul can, can uh, write it in code so you can understand it after you fail and God was building you back up. Read it. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship. He said the man can marry man, a woman, a man can be a woman, even if he got a, a, a two balls and a rod, he can go into a woman's restroom, he can dress like a woman, a, a woman can feel like a man, she can cut off her breast, she can take hormone pills to stop her period, a man can get a uterus implanted in him, he opposes everything that is against God. Go ahead. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, Showing himself that he is God. Brothers, you and sisters, you wouldn't understand that unless you fail. And then this white man spread his image throughout all the earth. You wouldn't know what that mean until you was amongst this white man and say, this man think he God. This man show himself as God. Look at all the pictures. I grew up seeing this white man as God in my church, in my house. That's 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 how powerful God is. He wait until the end to expose who he want to. And now you cannot deny that the man of sin that God said, I don't want them amongst you is the man of perdition. He shows himself as God. There's no other race on earth that's going around pushing 
an heir of Jesus. There's one race on the earth that's doing that, brothers and sisters. Hey, God said, I'm going to reveal it. Zeb, Go ahead. Y'all, did y'all get, uh, I always pull this when people ask about, you know, the, the Psalms 137. Did y'all pull that yet? No, sir. Nah, bring it out. Get Psalms 137 because this goes back to what you and uh, AY, AY is saying. Uh, it's, it's, it's over for them. It's nothing that we can do about it. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Even today, we don't, we can't do nothing to them. We don't have, listen, we can't be racist against them. We can't kill them. We don't, we don't want to do nothing to them. You understand? So for, for people to bring that up is odd to me. They kicking our ass and we telling them, stop kicking our ass. And people say, we're not supposed to uphold them. They're kicking our ass. They're killing us. What are you talking about? Why you even bring that up? All we just pointing the evil out that they do. And you say don't abhor them when they killing us? Man, there's something wrong with y'all. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the, the children the, the, of... The David say, remember, O Lord, remember. So he's wrong for saying this? To remember? Read. The children of Edom. He said, remember the children of Edom. Is David wrong for saying that, sir? Is he wrong for saying that? Is it wrong for us to say, remember the people who killed us, who raped us, who robbed us, who stole our land? Read. In the day of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation. They say, destroy it, destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. They was behind the people who destroyed us. They was the people who destroyed us. Read. O daughter of Babylon, mm -hmm. who art to be destroyed. What the Bible say? O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. The Bible said they're going to be destroyed. That's prophecy. It's, you can't get around that. Hey, is David wrong for saying that? That's what I'm saying. It, it, hey, it's crazy. I, I got a better one for y'all. I got a better one for y'all. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get okay. it. Psalms okay. 149? This one right here. They, uh, 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 Pastor Bowie got to explain this. Because the sister confirmed that he let Edom. I heard it. I didn't want to bear false witness on him. People told me that they do have Esau there. Uh, just like Geno Jennings. Geno Jennings, same way, suit wearing, bald head, no beard. Okay? Uh, fighting to get the white man into the kingdom. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Let's see if, if the Messiah was fighting to get Esau, Edomites, into the kingdom. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So she did not want help for herself. She wanted help for her daughter. Okay, you know how sympathy is to children. Let's help the children, the little kids. Read on. But, I'm sorry. And behold. But Read she again. answered her. Read again. Yeah, verse 20. Verse 22, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. You begging in tears for help for your child, and Christ is looking at you like you stupid. Christ didn't answer her. I want to hear Pastor Bowie break this down. Read on. And his disciples came and besought him. Saint. So the disciples came to Christ and said, Christ, hello, Christ, read on. Send her away, for she crieth after us. So when Christ ignored her, he obviously ignored her to the point where she got the message, I ain't helping you. Okay, so she went to his disciples, because remember, he gave the disciples the power to heal. Then the disciples was like, yo, Christ, get rid of this woman, man. Now she's bothering us. Read on. But... He answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel. Christ made it clear, I am only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So how now are the Israelite churches going against what Christ said? This makes absolutely no sense to me. Read on. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, She got on her feet, begging him, Please, please, son of God, please help my daughter. Read on. Lord, help me. She was begging him. Remind, with keeping context, that he ignored her, and the disciples said, Yo, get away from here. That was the spirit they had. So when did this new Christian Israelite spirit pop up? Of now they're opening their doors and telling them, Come in. Read on. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. What you call a female dog, a B-I-T-C-H? He said, I ain't giving you no help, you dog. Hey, hey, yo. Hey, yo. Read on. You, you didn't, hey, yo, go you ahead, go ahead. Go hey, ahead, check this Benjamin. Out. Imagine if our brothers and sisters in Charleston, South Carolina, would have would have known this scripture and would have known Christ like how Christ rolled. They might have been alive when Dilla Roof came and knocked on their damn door. Hey, they they, they they saw the what they saw Dylan Roof and they saw Jesus. They felt you know how some black people they get excited when the white people come. They want to be around us. Oh my God! Damn. Go get your best damn. silverware. Get the cups. Get the good dishes out. Exactly. That's how they welcomed him in. You know how black people act. Damn. Hey, they hey, was hey, excited. The sister, the sister started started lusting at his hair. Yep. Like, oh, they was I like, wish, he, he got good yeah. hair. He got good he hair. Got I wish I had good that the hair. They probably got on the phone and started calling. Guess what? We got white people here, y'all. And that white man said, I'm going to wait till these niggas bow their head down in prayer, and I'm going to execute them, and that's exactly what he did. You people are crazy. Okay. Christ told this white woman, you a dog, and it's not me to help you. Read on. And she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs of the, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So she acknowledged she was a dog. She took the pride out of her, like the pride, proud white people now. Read on. And Jesus the then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Because his own people was giving him a hard time. Just like I say to you wicked niggers, okay? You, you attack us harder than white people. You got black people that will fight. They will jump through hoops to help them and save them. And white people show more humility than you niggers. So Christ is like, damn, this ain't for you. And look how great your faith is. And he did, did, if later on you read, Christ could do no more healings because the people rejected him so bad and mistreated him so bad. He said he marveled at their unbelief, like you wicked black people now that go against what the gospel say. You crazy. Read on. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Okay, so watch this. This is what they leave out. Because a Christian will go, you see, you see, he helped her anyway. It's going to tell you in another gospel why he helped her. Give me Mark chapter 7, verse 27. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 27. But Jesus said unto her. 724, I'm sorry, start with 24. 24 and from thence he arose and went into the borders of tyre and sidon and entered into a house and would have and would have no man know it he was trying to hide he was hiding from her read on but he could not be hid why was he hiding from her because salvation is not for her he was trying to sneak in the house quickly and this white woman spotted him read on for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by nation. So now they tell you she is not a Israelite, because it didn't say that in Mark. Now it's being more specific. Read on. 
And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. For it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dog. He called her dog and said, I'm here to fill the children. It's not meat, meaning it's not required by God to give what's for the help for the Israelites to you dogs. Watch this, read on. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. She said, I just want a few crumbs. Please help my daughter. Read on. And he said unto her, this is why he healed her. This is why right here, read on. For this saying, because you acknowledge way. yourself as a dog, for this saying, read on, go thy way. The devil is gone out of their out of thy. So dog. that's why you got to read all the gospels. Okay, God did it this way for a reason, because a Christian will read the first part and say, "You see, you see, he helped her." But now he tells you here why he helped her, because she acknowledged she knew her place. And she acknowledged herself as a dog. She didn't have that pride on her that a lot of you niggers have in you. Okay? And that's why he says when he comes back, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. If you don't bow down to Christ when he comes back and, and, and he says, I will not meet thee as a man, he's going to kill you. Okay? Everybody's going to have to humble themselves. This white woman just had enough sense to humble her ass right now. So when she acknowledged herself as a dog, he said, because you acknowledge that, I'm going to take the devil out your daughter. So any of you Israelites in a church where your leader is allowing them in there, you are not in the truth. You're playing church. You are not in the truth. I mute my mic. Is there a reason why... Uh hispanic brothers and sisters i'm hispanic my brothers from my father's from nicaragua but i don't see them too much in the truth at all uh i see very little to and that's easy hispanic. to explain that's easy to explain remember they have an extended history with the abuse of the europeans the conquistadors the spaniards okay they were enslaved 200 years prior to the Morenos, okay, from the fort. We got documents that said that they were being abused by the conquistadors from the early 1400s. Okay, our slavery is 200 years later. Okay, the length of time is not as long. So they've been indoctrinated an extra 200 years. Look how hard it is to get the black people out. Okay, so imagine them prior to, they went into captivity first. The Afro-Latinos went into captivity first in the 14th century. Then they went after the other tribes, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, 200 years later. But they had already decimated most of the, what you call Latinos today. So it's harder for them because they assimilated easier into the culture of the Spaniards, the Spanish, the conquistadors. That makes a lot of sense because it took my uh, my one of my best friends has been telling me about the truth for the beginning of this year and it took me only till now to come around and I was being really hard headed. So okay. he was and, explaining and, to and, me that all that made sense with what you're saying and he said and he things did the same are, thing you did. Things are changing because they're popping up all over. All over you see more Afro Hispanics returning back to their heritage, returning back to their identity. A lot of them, like I said, they, they had 200 years of domination and destruction to themselves before they even t c caught up to the Negroes in, in, in America. Okay, so it's, it's harder and the Bible prophesies that they're going to be the last to come in. Okay, it says that, uh, uh, get, uh, that he saved the tents of Judah first. Okay, don't worry, they're going to wake up. But the Bible says that first, because the Negro in America is of the tribe of Judah, God says he's going to save them first, then they're going to rescue their Latino brothers. Read it, please. Zechariah 12, y'all. Come on. 
Viva Rito. Viva Rito. Damn, Rito. Come on, Rito. These readers are doing real Zach bad now, man. Zach Zechariah 12. Zechariah 12. Come on, Foel. Around 7. Verse 7. Damn. Foel. Oh, God. I'll read it. I'll read it. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Okay, so God wants to give the glory to Judah first. Then the people of Afro-Latino uh, descent, they're going to wake up. When they see us rise up, they're going to wake up. It's the same thing in the hood, okay? We do things, then eventually they catch up. They're, they were with us in the conquest for a reason. They're with us in the ghettos for a reason. Europeans know who they are. Okay, There's, give me, what's the scripture that says that uh, the wisdom in their old age, they're destroyed and they don't even know it? I think it's Hosea. Hosea, uh, I think it's 8, chapter 8. Let me find it. it. We, just, we are on our own, bro. The readers, God. <laughs> I ain't even going to look, wait for them to come in. They gone. <laughs> you know how we are. We've been doing these marathons. And they can't keep up. You youngins can't keep up. The old man is still up. Hey, terrible, hey, terrible, hey, why? Terrible. Hey, why? <laughs> hey, why? Ain't you supposed to be asleep right now? Yes, it's my bedtime to go to work for tonight. But you, I, we haven't done this all week, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, I live in uh, Houston, Texas. Um, how can I? How can I? Uh, hey, what script you want in a school? What yes, give them. Give them the instructions for our Houston school. Hey, uh, all you got to do is reach us out. You see the uh, the big biblical smoke on top over our yeah, head. Yeah, that. Uh huh. Just reach out to biblical smoke dot um at gmail dot com and give us your information and we will hit you up like that. And also right, email perfect. me. If you click on my thumbnail, you see my email address there. Email me with your phone number, and I'll contact them, and I'll let them know that um you want to visit, okay? Okay, perfect. And can I get a, a, a little bit of advice on, on, on a little topic that I spoke to my brother that, that, that helped me out and came to the truth? Uh, so, for example, I um, I've been I've been trying my best, you know, to to follow the commandments, and it's only been about a week or two weeks for me, and I'm still kind of getting knowledgeable on them on what I need to do. But for example, with my wife, um, I've been on her since I was 17. We're six, we're 20. I'm 26 now, and um, I told her about the uh, fringe, you know, what you were talking about earlier, and um, it really kind of blew me away with what she said because whenever uh, she grew up in a in a Christian home and Christianity and all that. So it's kind of hard for her to break, uh, to break away from that. I didn't grow up in church at, at all. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit easier for me to maneuver myself around, around the truth. Cause this is pretty much all I know now. And, um, for example, I told her about the fringes and, um, uh, and the Sabbath, how we don't, I don't want us to be going out or doing nothing from uh, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And uh, pretty much the way that she turned that down was uh, I'm being religious. And I understand that she's saying that. Because you cut off, you still there? You're, you're being quote unquote religious, but I told her, hey, if it's in the book and if it's in the Bible, this is what we got to do. There's no so two debating things. it. Two things, you said you just learned this a week ago? Yes, a week to two weeks ago, I came you, around. You're moving too fast, bro. <laughs> Slow down, pump the brakes. <laughs> pump Damn. the brakes. I like Man, this deal. I, my friend tells me that, but, but if, I, if I'm going to go in, if I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in full time. I like your zeal, but you got to be patient, bro. Okay. And the reason why right. is, that's the, re the reason why is, the Messiah said, let your light shine that they may see your good works. 
Okay, she doesn't understand. This is new to her. How old is she? She's uh, 26 as well. Okay, so just after she sees you doing it, okay, listen, when I was doing this, my woman left me, bro. She said the same thing you said. She said, nigga, you are crazy. She packed her stuff and she left because I was doing the same thing you did. Okay, and my family, they said I was crazy. They was like, yo, what's wrong with you? You went from never ever reading to the Bible to Mr. Bible Thumper. You hitting everybody over the head with the Bible. My job, the co-workers were reporting me because I was throwing anything that was unclean out of the fridge. I said, I don't want your pork touching my food and our company refrigerator. <laughs> so I'm just telling you, slow down. Two weeks is good. I like your zeal. I don't want to break your zeal. But she has to see you're serious. And you're not going to prove your dedication to this to her in just two weeks. Okay? So just give us some time to come around. And there's a lot more for you to learn. Like, for instance, when you email us, ask for the study guide. We have a study guide we give to all the newcomers. And you need to go through that book and you need to study that book. And once you've mastered that book, okay, which is going to take you some time, okay, then you can start to take the approach. But you got to be more tactful in how you deal with her. Do you guys have kids? Is he still there or I lost him? He just yeah, he, unmuted. He's, yeah, he's trying to talk. Hey, if you talk, hear William, if you talk, we can't hear you. Hey, take over for a minute. I got to take this call. Hey, William. Go, go out the room and come back in. I can't hear. I can't hear nothing he's saying. Yeah, we have three kids. My bad. I'm here. Okay. He was. There you go. There you go. A. Hey, hey, why? There you go. Hey. And again, how old are your kids? Uh, I have a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and a year and a half. And a year okay, and a half. Okay, that's good. That's good. They real little. Okay. God forbid you had teenagers. It will be war in your house. Because there's going to be a lot of drastic changes in your life. So take your time to bring them to her. Okay? And you have to be knowledgeable to answer her questions. And you're not going to be able to do it in just two weeks. Okay? Yeah. Do not, under any circumstances, bring her into this room. Okay? Because <laughs> this, is a, this is a bloodbath in this room. We don't play here. We don't take hey. no prisoners. We don't take no hostages. I told my brother too I much said... I told my brother, I, I, I told him, I said, man, I don't want nothing sugar-coated. I don't care because one thing uh, about her parents are uh, uh, Christians, like I said, and and uh, we were talking about the fringes and, and uh, just just conversation. And he told me that, you know, that was before Christ. That uh, that was before uh, Christ, uh, you know, laid, laid himself on the cross, this and that. And then he said, we don't have to do that no more. And, you know, I, I'm not able to to – you know, have a conversation with him because I'm not knowledgeable enough. Right, and that's why I said right now, you're in boot camp. You just got your uniform, you just got your hair cut, okay? So we're taking you through basic training now. Eventually, you're going to go to war. You are going to go to war. You're going to, you ever watch the movie uh, Edge of Tomorrow with Tom Cruise? No, I haven't. You got to watch that movie. That's one of my favorite, that's in my top five movies. And in the movie, he kept, re he kept reliving the same day over and over and over. Okay? The world was at war. And they threw him in battle. And he normally just does with office stuff. He was never in combat. He never experienced combat. So they were running out of men to fight. So they threw him into the war. And he kept refusing to fight. He was like, look, look, I, I, I don't know how to fight. I don't have no training, nothing. And every time he would get killed in combat, killed in combat, killed in combat, until he realized that this was his destiny. By the middle of the movie, he became the most dangerous fighter that they had ever seen. 
It's the same thing God is doing with us. We're in the beginning stages. We don't know how to fight yet. You hearing us in here fight? We've been doing this for years. Okay, so you're going through the training simulator now. The only good thing is you're in the best place for training. When we're finished with you, you're going to be able to attack and defeat anybody that comes on your path. But it takes time. I would never send you in battle in two weeks. When you get a chance, watch that movie. It's a good movie. All of you need to watch The Edge of Tomorrow. There's no way that the uh, that white people could have put that movie together if they didn't know the bible because that's the same thing with us god sends our spirit back to the earth repeatedly until we align ourselves with him and then we fight for him and that's what the movie was about he didn't understand why he was thrown into this war you have been thrown into a war i was thrown into the war years ago the men that you see on this stage they were thrown into the war years ago I didn't know how to fight, okay? I was killing anything that moved, and that was not the way to fight. So now I learned to be more skillful in battle. Where I come from, that's what I was taught. Now I'm more strategic with the kill, okay? Now I'll I'll invite you in, I'll sit you down, I'll give you something to eat, I'll tell you to take your shoes off, and I'll reason with you before I kill you. I wasn't that man before. Okay, I'm just trying to give you an analogy of how I've changed, okay, because I didn't know how to fight. So now you have to be more strategic with how you deal with the evil souls around you. And in that movie, when you watch it, you're going to see what I'm talking about. I may have watched that movie 19 times because there's so much spiritual things going on in the movie that uh, simulates our life. We're learning how to fight for God. Watch this. Give me Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. This is the book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. So God didn't call you into this truth for peace. Read on. I came not to send peace, but a sword. The sword is the word of God. You're being prepared to fight for God. Read on. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. So you're going to have arguments with your own father who you love, read on. And the daughter against her mother. You're gonna have arguments with your mother. Your wife is gonna be afraid to have arguments with her mother concerning God, read on. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. You're gonna have problems with your in-laws. Christ is preparing you, read on. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You're gonna have enemies in your house. So I'm doing what, this wasn't taught to me when I first came in. I thought I was supposed to attack every single person. And I did a lot of damage because I was not skilled in fighting. Okay? Then as I read the Bible and I understood, Christ said, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 11. Go to the 11th verse. Matthew chapter 10, verse 11. And unto whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire in it. Who is worthy. So you have to assess their spirit if they're even worthy to have a biblical discussion, which I never used to do. I just used to force the Bible on everybody and then condemn them to death. But that's not what Christ said. Read it again. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire. Who in it is worthy? So you have to assess their spirit to see if they're worthy to have a biblical discussion. Read on. And there abide till the go till ye go thence. And then you can stay no, and reason with them. Read on. No. And when ye come into an house, salute it. You greet them when you come into the house. Read on. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Because the house may not be worthy. So you have to check first if the house is worthy to have a biblical discussion. So Christ gave instructions I didn't notice in the beginning. So I attacked everybody. I forced my beliefs on everybody. And it did not work out good. So I don't want you to go and make the same mistakes I made. Read on. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. You realize they don't want it, the peace of God. So you bring your peace back from them. Read on. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, 
when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Meaning don't go back and forth with them. I didn't know that. I will follow people around and attack them. I will set up appointments to continue our discussion just to show them that they're going to die and they're stupid. That was wrong. Read on. Verily, I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Because they're going to be judged by God for rejecting the word. Read on. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Christ said you're going to be like a sheep around a pack of wolves. A sheep cannot defend himself from a wolf. So because so much opposition is against you, this is what Christ says. Read on. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless wisdom. as doves. You got to use wisdom. Be wise as a serpent. How does a serpent move? Slow, calculated, and careful. If a serpent is in your house, you won't even know it until it strikes. So Christ said to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. So that means you have to take time, you have to be tactful, you have to be wise, you have to be calculated. That's how a snake moves, slow and careful. It's a deadly, deadly venomous uh, uh, animal, but it moves slow and careful, which is what I'm instructing you to do. Don't just come and start forcing everything on everybody. Hey, take hey, your time. You can catch a rabbit. A snake can catch a rabbit. It's yeah. way faster. Okay, so you understand that, brother? Yes, sir. I understand that for sure. I'll, I'll right. take my time and I'll, I'll, I'll read my Bible first. Take and, your time. And, and what you should do is, what you should do is, first assess her spirit and see the things that she's bothering. Then you train up on that. You brush up on that. Okay, once you brush up on that, she's going to see, hey, this is not the same guy anymore. He's smarter. He's studying. Okay, then she'll be intrigued by what you're saying. But just take your time, study and learn. Christ said, your enemies are going to be they of your own house. Go back to that, Matthew 10, verse 37. Read this one more time. We forgot one more thing. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Because you may be forced to pick between your parents. Okay. So you have to prove your worthiness to God in his word. Read on. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Some people, your wife may get mad and say, look, I'm leaving you and I'm taking the kids. Are you ready for that? I'll have to be ready for it. Okay, I want you to prepare yourself. And you're not ready in two weeks, bro. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Okay, when my wife took my daughter it crushed me okay i love my daughter and it crushed me so i'm just telling you you hear me speaking now but i have battle scars the men on stage we have battle scars we've been through a lot this was not a walk in the park this is a matter of life and death families get destroyed divorces happen friendships are dissolved Family feuds are started behind the Bible. Okay? Christ's family was against him. And this is what they don't teach you in church. Christ was hard for him to walk this earth. Get that. John chapter 7, verse 1. Christ, you, you, you are now a target for the devil when you come into, into this book. You have been separated from mankind to walk with God to walk with the greatest force known to mankind. So the most evilest force known to mankind is going to target you. And that's why I said, you got to build up for that. That's a war. You're getting ready for the fight of your life. That's why Christ said, many are called, few are chosen. A lot of men are not built for this. I've seen a lot of come and I've seen a lot of go. And the only advice to, to them is to move real slow. Get that, please. John chapter 7, verse 1. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry. He said, I'm not the walking Jews. around my people. He's Christ, who was the Son of God with spiritual power. He could kill anybody with just one touch. It said he walked in Galilee, and he would not walk in Jewry. Why? Because the Jews sought to kill him. His own people turned against him. 
I wasn't prepared for this when I came in. There was no such thing as a clubhouse app or social media. There was no internet to look this stuff up back in 1996. Black people just started getting computers. That's when the computer uh, commercial came out. Hey, get a Dell. Nobody's talking about Dell computers no more. There were no smartphones. I had the black uh, Radio Shack flip phone with the red letters on it when cell phones first came out. Okay, so this was new. So I didn't have nobody to speak to. I was navigating on my own. I didn't know the scriptures that well. And I was unskilled and messed up a lot of things to get to where I am now. And we went through this so that you newcomers don't have to go through it. So just pay attention, come into the room, ask questions, study, and slowly introduce this to your wife and children. You understand? I got that. Appreciate that. All right. I'll mute my mic. Do we also have a moderator, or is it just a reader? <laughs> reader, you did all right, <laughs> by the way. Can hey, I ask a question? Go ahead, Mookie. That's how you say your name, Mookie? Mookie. Yeah, Mookie, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, I just want to ask a question. I would like to, if you can under, uh, explain to me, Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, when it says that the book was sealed, I should, I, I, I mute my mic. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. So there were certain visions that Daniel was showed that God didn't want them revealed until the last days. So that's why, uh, give me Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel chapter 2, and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's why there's this new explosion of people searching the Bible. Okay? Now you have everybody reading the Bible now. It's like a new explosion. Before you would just be like, ah, oh, that's that church person. Now it's different. Now people you never expected to be reading the Bible... God has poured out his spirit on them. And now we're prophesying. We're going into the Bible. We're not just playing church like they do on Sunday. We're going into the Bible and reading prophecy and bringing the book to life. All right, so that's what that means. I have a question. Hey. Hey, Mookie, are you finished? I have a question. Wait, we we still speaking to Mookie. Hold on one second. You understand that, Mookie? If you're speaking, Mookie, we can't hear you. Okay, Zion, go ahead. Yes, sir. How you guys doing today, man? I had a question on Deuteronomy 23, and uh, I think it's 3 or 2. I'm going to talk about Who is that? Master. Oh, gosh. Hey, we just what, answered that, didn't we? Yeah. No. Hey, what, you, no, what, you, what you want to stand in that? No, the bastard. Yeah, what What about it? Yeah, it said, the bastard said, I dwelled in, uh, in the kingdom. No, that's not what it says. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Read on. Even to, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Why? Because we can't determine his pedigree. That bastard, you don't we can't identify who his father was. Okay. So so if your father and mother was not married. That's, that's at, got nothing at, to do with it. At that time, at that okay. time, 
Okay. Okay. The is the Israelite nation. They had a registry, and if you couldn't be found back back then to keep your heritage, to keep your legacy, they had a registry. Okay. Before there was birth certificates, there was an Israelite registry. We lost all that. That's gone. When they enslaved us, they destroyed. They took our records. So that doesn't apply now. Okay. Now we return back to God through the Word. Christ said, "My sheep hear my voice." We don't have the registry no more. Okay, but back then there was a registry. And if you couldn't tell who your father was, you were not permitted the same privileges as an Israelite, even though your mother was an Israelite. Mm hmm. That sounds good to me. It, I, I just want to say you guys were doing a great job, too, man. All praises, yeah. all praises. Hey, um, yeah, brother from Houston, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, uh, I forgot. I was looking for scripture to show you about your people. Uh, start with Hosea chapter 7, verse 1. About the destruction of your people and why it's so harder for them to wake up. Hosea chapter 7 and verse 1. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. Ephraim means fruit, fruitful bow. And uh, though they, they call uh, Puerto Ricans Puerto Rico, which means rich port, their God-given name is fruitful bow. Read on. And the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood. And the thief cometh in, and the troops, the troop of robbers spoil without. So when they were in sin, the conquistadors came in and spoiled them. Read on. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Because God keeps a record of the wickedness we did. They didn't think about it. Read on. Now, their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. Meaning God did not forget the things that they did. Read on. They make the king glad with their wickedness. This is proof that their allegiance is to the other nations and not their nation. Okay? Their spirit was to align themselves with their enslavers. Read on. And the princes with their lies. Okay? So they started to live a lifestyle that was a lie to please the people that was ruling over them. Read on. They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who ceaseth from the rising after he hath kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners. So he gave the analogy of baking, okay, that the sin was in them like the way you would prepare a cake. And then it says, in the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with the scorners. The people who scorned against God, they formed an allegiance with them. Read on. For they have made ready their heart like an oven. The way you heat up an oven before you cook was the spirit that was on them to do sin with the other nations. Read on. Whilst they lie in wait, their baker sleepeth all the night. In the morning, it burneth as a flaming fire. So God speaks in allegory and similitudes. So he's giving you a similitude and an allegory of baking and showing you that their behavior was that of when you would prepare something to bake, that their heart was like an oven with the sin. Read on. They are all hot as an oven and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that I, that calleth unto me. So they destroyed all their own leaders that could bring them back to God. So I'm showing you biblically and historically why they've fallen so low. Read on. Ephraim, he have mixed himself among the people. So they went out of their way to assimilate into the conquistador's culture, identity, heritage. Read on. Ephraim. Is a cake not turned? A cake not baked properly. Read on. Strangers have devoured his strength. 
So the strength that they had to return back to God, the conquistadors, the Spaniards took it. So I'm giving you the answers here so you understand why they're in such a bad place and they're taking so long to wake up. Read on. And he knoweth it not. He doesn't even know. Yeah. You speak to the Puerto Ricans and you tell them, look, you were great people. You was the Boricuas. You was the, the, the mighty kings. You had a, you, a, a, at one time, I got a book that says that they will play uh, with diamonds and gold. That's why when the Spaniards saw them, they reduced them to a couple of hundred. They massacred them. They brutalized them. Get, get this book called The Account of the Destruction of the Indies by Bartoloma de las Casas. And it tells you the brutality that white Spaniards did to Ephraim, the Puerto Ricans. Now that book going up. Okay. What's the name of that book one more time? A short account of the destruction of the Indies. A short account of the destruction of the Indies. Okay. Got and it's going to show you the brutality that the conquistadors okay. did, that the white Spaniards did. They did horrible atrocities. They chopped up babies. They fed babies to dogs. They sent spikes through the women. They cut their titties off. They chopped their hands off to take their gold. At one time, you had more gold than America. You had more riches than America. That's why they call Puerto Ricans rich port. The white Spaniards got rich from the brutality, slavery, and robbery. Okay, of the, okay. the Afro Latinos, read and on. If I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Israelite is is uh, distinguished by their by their father, right? By your dad. There's no such okay. thing as mixed with God. You are what your father is. Okay, and my my father's from Nicaragua. I spoke uh, here on on the on the group yesterday, and I forgot the name of the tribe, but it starts with Z. That's what I was told. Zebulon. 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 Okay, I'll do my homework on that. Go ahead. Okay. Read on. The book of Hosea, chapter 7, and verse 9. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he know it not. They don't even Yay. know what happened to them. That's why we're now teaching them what happened, how they were destroyed as a people. Read on. Gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. Even the elders, like we could go to our elders, and they'll have an account of slavery. They'll remember things far back. But the elders of the Afro-Latinos, they know nothing. Read on. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face, and they do not return to the Lord their God. So it's a prideful spirit on them that they don't want to return back to God as his people. Read on. Nor seek him for all this. So that's the answer for why it's so difficult to wake them up. They went through 200 years of oppression before the Negro in America did. So it's very important that you understand this. There's a lot of historical account that you need to learn. There's a lot of books you got to get. Uh, there's also Clubhouse in Spanish, Humo Biblico. You have to go there also because there's a lot of teachers that know your heritage that can help you, that can explain things to you. Then you will become a more effective teacher. But don't go and try to destroy your house or shake your house up in two weeks. You don't know enough. Okay, give me that scripture uh, about a novice. I forgot. We don't have no, we on our own, man. Let me get it real quick. Damn, I thought the reader was doing so good. Uh, a novice is a target for the devil. Give me First Timothy, chapter three, verse five. First Timothy, chapter three, and verse five. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, and you don't know how to rule your house in two weeks, you got to learn. If you don't know how to rule your house, read on. How shall he take care of the church of God? How could you start talking about making your house into the church of God? You got to learn these things. Read on. Not a novice. A novice is a new person. You're new to this. So if you take 
the little bit of limited knowledge you have as a novice and try to restructure things, this is what's going to happen to you. Read on. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So the devil is going to attack you hard because the devil knows that you're not learned enough. So that's why I'm telling you, slow down. The Bible says that you have to get milk before you can eat meat. You're like a newborn babe. You're being born again, and that takes time. So I'm not saying that you're not going to be able to fight, but you have to be trained first. You got it? I got that for sure. I'll keep that in mind next time. Okay, I'm just watch who you talk to. Watch who you talk to. Don't challenge nobody. Do not challenge anybody. Just study, study, study. After you study, you're going to be able to deal with anything that they say to you. And if you can't, you got us. But it's going to take time. All right? Can I ask a question next? I'll be in here every day. I got y'all. Appreciate it. All right. Who Who was that? Who said something? That's me, Ricky. Hey, you just came on, right? Yeah, a little early I just came on. Yeah, um, they had a brother who wanted to ask a question. I think it was Son of the God. He was before okay, you. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I wait. Shalom, shalom, brother. Yeah, hey, bro. All right, I just have a question. Uh, I'm new to the word. Um, I congregate at headquarters. It's only been about eight weeks, but I have uh, I have family members that are uh, a Christian pastor. Um, our holy days, of course, are not their holy days, but they try to um, they try to have them and invite us all over for those functions. Um, and at those functions, they like to pray and put the oil on you. Uh, like I said, I'm new, and I really don't know what to do, so I don't go. I got I'm you. asking hey, I... a question. Yes. Hey, hey, yo, you mind if I give him a scripture? Go ahead. Go ahead. First Corinthians 10 and 20. Read that. Book of first Corinthians. Now, before you read it, do you believe that they are godly people, these Christians? They, um, I, it's really hard to yes say. No. no. Okay. Why? Is it because they do like Christmas and birthdays and stuff like that, correct? Correct. They're, they're right. trying to lean towards our way, but it's not, okay. it's not right now. All right. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Now, you tell me, my, my brother. Now, with what we just, uh, A.O. just broke down to the brother, right? Uh, William, using tact, um, being, um, using wisdom. What should you do? I'm going to have to separate myself. You're going to have to separate yourself, right? Now, what you should do is use wisdom with them. Pull the pastor to the side. Hey, let me, sh let me explain why I'm not going to be able to do that. Let me show you in the scriptures. Let me sh show you in history why that's evil for us black people to celebrate. That's not our culture. Let me show you what our real culture is. Do you understand, bro? You yes, I do. Proverbs 1 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 2. So we just read, you can't have fellowship with devils, right? Right. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 2. To know wisdom and instruction. So we are to, to know wisdom and the laws of God. The laws of God is not going to let us celebrate Christmas, Easter, birthdays. Because guess what they're going to be eating at that table, bro? What are they going to be eating at that table? They got me eating oh, that God. turkey and that pork. Oh, oh, what is it? Thanksgiving dinner? Thanksgiving, yeah. Those those oh, type shit. of holidays. I don't I don't yeah, go for those God. holidays, but they're trying to do our our holy days now. Okay, good. And invite Let's us over for those. No, 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 no. You can't you can't compromise. There is no compromise with God, bro. It's either you're okay. doing what God said or go die somewhere. That's it. You can't you you can't say, okay, I'll I'll do your holidays if you do mine. No. Hell no. 
Okay. All right? Because guess Question what? Question and answer. You're practicing, you're practicing your culture. They are practicing slave culture. The things they're doing was forced on us via slavery. Okay? So we can't do, we can't go backwards to that slave religion now. That's over with. Don't, Correct. Don't care. And, and do this, brother. Don't give a damn how anybody feels about it. Your mama, your daddy, your pat, the, 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 your, your old pastor, whoever. To hell with them. You do what God says. Read it again. To know wisdom and instruction uh -huh. to perceive the words of understanding. To perceive. So right now, you are getting the words of understanding. Our people in the Christian church, they don't have any understanding. Right. Okay, read on. To receive the instruction of wisdom, uh -huh. justice, and judgment, and uh -huh. equality. They know nothing about equity. justice. They don't give a damn about justice, and they don't want judgment. Go ahead. To give subtility to the simple. Stop. Stop. Read it again, because that goes with what A.O. said about being wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Read that part again. To give subtility to the simple. To give subtility to the simple. Meaning, use wisdom. Use wisdom in your words. Your foundation is now Christ. Christ is going to show you how to speak to people and convict them without even being offensive to them. You understand? The truth is offensive to our people already, no matter how you bring it out. But now you're going to bring it out in a way that's going to convict, convict them and show the wickedness inside of them. You understand, brother? Yes, I do. Read on. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. That's what you want, brother. You want knowledge and discretion or being discreet. You know what the word discreet means? Yes, I do. What does it mean? Discreet is to be... <clears throat> Discreet is when you are, uh, you know exactly what you're doing and you're going about it the correct way. Okay. Discreet is speaking in a way that is non-offensive. It's not going to be non-offensive. It's going to call, it's going to fall right back on the pastor. And it's going to show the pastor how wicked he is without you even being offensive to him. Okay. You understand? That's what being discreet yeah. is. All right, so you tell them, you show them in a way why you are commanded not to celebrate his pagan holidays or white supremacist holidays, and he is commanded to, to, to keep our feast days or the biblical feast days because that's his real culture. Right. You show him how he lost his culture via slavery because on the west coast of Africa, in Africa, we were not modern-day Christians. We were only modern-day Christians right here in America. Now, now the white man has shown him what the Bible means. Hell no. You got to start all over. You got to show him that. You understand? I do, yes. And, and, and guess what? At that table, that when I asked you what's going to be on that table, there's going to be a big-ass ham on the table. There's going to be some, uh, some freaking all kinds of abominable food. Besides lawful food, there's going to be abominable food. And guess what's going to happen if you go to that table? Go to 1 Corinthians 8. Now, you know you're an Israelite, right? Yes. And the pastor knows you and your family are Israelites, right? Correct. So what do you think he's going to have on that table? Do you think he's going to have all lawful food, or is it going to be some ham on that plate, on that table? What do you think? Uh, well, no, they don't eat pork. They don't eat pork? What about crab, no. shrimp, and lobster? No, none of that stuff. Why not? They just don't. It's not in, It's not something that they practice. But there got to be a reason. No, I wouldn't have the answer to that. It's okay, just not something that, yeah. Why don't you eat these things? Because most black Christians eat pork. They, they will die before they give up pork. <laughs> most Christians. You understand? Mm. Yeah, I wasn't, so the yeah. point is, if you guys are at the same table... Some, there's going to be, there is a battle going on. Someone is trying to, to win over another to their side. Because if you guys are right, that means the Christians are wrong. And if the Christians are right, 
That means you guys are wrong. You can't be at the table and say, uh, yeah, we Israelites and you guys are Christians, and it's just fine to wait. No, that means that somebody, somebody's wrong. Somebody's off. You understand? Yes, I do. All right, I'm going to leave it there, bro. All right, thank you. Mic. Hey, man, get that in Acts 5, 29, man. This has got to be everybody's, especially around these time, these newer brothers, newer sisters. These holidays is coming up, and uh, you're going to be tempted. Here's the scripture that you lean upon to strengthen you through the times. Read that for them. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Boom, right there. Write that down, brothers and sisters. Memorize that like you memorized John 3, 16 in, in Christianity. Every time somebody wants you to do something that's not thus saith the Lord, we ought to obey God rather than man. I, why aren't you celebrating Christmas with us? We've been keeping this tradition. We ought to obey God rather than man. Your auntie and all the family gonna be over here. We ought to obey God rather than man. They go kick you. They go. They ain't gonna kick you out. They go put hands on you and throw your ass out of there. All you gotta do is say, "We ought to obey God rather than man." I'm not doing that. I won't be over there to eat that that stuff with y'all no more. Why? Right, right. We ought to obey God rather than man. Right. That's all you gotta say, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, bitch. Hey, hey, um. Get First Corinthians eight because that's a good point. The holiday season is coming up. You got Halloween, and then after Halloween, you got the family, quote unquote, family holidays where the white man gives all your family time off of work, extended vacation. For for Thanksgiving, you got Thursday and Friday. You got the white man give you two days. Then you got Christmas and New Year's. Okay, to everybody, look what the white man does, y'all. He gives you time off of work. Excuse me, paid time off of work. And this is the only oh, yeah, they love that. You, you and your family can get together. How convenient is it that the white man creates all these pagan holidays and makes it so convenient for you to celebrate his holiday? You understand? He doesn't do it for Passover. He doesn't do it for tabernacles. We had to personally take time off of work and lose money to celebrate God's holiday. But the white man has made it very convenient for you to celebrate the damn devil and reverence the damn devil via turkey, cranberry sauce, a Christmas tree, mistletoe, candy cane, and gifts that you chocolate all year saving for. Chocolates with little heart-shaped chocolates. Right now, read that. The book of First Corinthians, chapter eight, start and verse three. one. No, start verse, at verse three. three. So I want you to hear what God said because I guarantee you, more than likely, there's a couple of brothers and sisters that have that are newly coming into the faith that they are the children of Israel, right? And you've never experienced a holiday season. So you know what's going to happen? Your parents are going to be calling you. They're going to be giving you Christmas gifts. All that foolishness, right? They're calling you for Thanksgiving dinner. All that foolishness. Here's how you, pre here's how you prepare your mind. Read. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 3. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating. Yeah, it was verse 4. As concerning, therefore, the things, the eating. Go ahead. The eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. Stop, stop. So, you can have beef on the table. You can have um, macaroni and cheese. That's lawful. Beef is lawful. Chicken is lawful. Right? It says, as concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols. Christmas is an idol. Thanksgiving is an idol. New Year's is an idol. Uh, Halloween, all these holidays, those are idols, y'all. Birthdays, that's idolatry. Horoscopes. Horoscopes, read on. We know that an idol is nothing in the world. We know that it's not of God and it's nothing. Go ahead. 
and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, New Year's. as there be gods many and lords many, uh -huh. but to us there is but one God, the Father. So we know that the idol is nothing. We know that there's not a God, the real God, for Christmas. Birthdays. Halloween. Right? Halloween coming up. You you break it up some, Benji. Spider-Man outfit. Damn. There you go. We can hear you. You back. One, two, one, two, one, two. You, you know that you're going to be tested for not buying little Jimmy a Spider-Man outfit. You know you're going to get tested for not buying little Latoya the princess the princess outfit for Halloween. For not passing out candy. Well. For not passing out candy or that stuff. For not dressing up and going to school on the Friday before Halloween. You know that's a test. And you know there's going to be repercussions for that. Read on. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, Read. of whom are all things, and we in him. Uh -huh. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we are all things, are all things, and we by him. We by him. Go ahead. Watch How this. be it? There is none. There is not in every man that knowledge. Stop right there. Stop right there. How be it? There, all our people don't know what we know. They don't know that they're the children of Israel. They don't know we went into slavery on cargo slave ships because we broke God's laws. They don't know that there's idols behind certain holidays. They don't know that it's a sin to celebrate Halloween. They don't know. Read that part again. How be it? There is not in every man that knowledge. Read. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. Stop. So you know it's Christmas dinner, and you go in and eat it even though you know it's Christmas dinner. You know Damn. those apples are sacri sacrificed to um, Halloween, but you still go and do it. Read. And their conscience being weak is defiled. See that? You defile when you go do that thing. You know Christmas is evil, and you still go celebrate it? You are defiled. Sit, sitting there feeling horrible, knowing hey, you ain't hey, supposed to be there. Hey, hey, you at the Thanksgiving table. You, hey, all year, you just find out you're the Israelite. Now you, now you, you kicking the good news about Jesus being a black man. The children of Israel are black people. Then you so damn weak, your daddy invites you to Thanksgiving, and you dare with everybody. Now they making fun of your way. Hey, this nigga was kicking that weed. Damn. Like, ha, ha. Now, hey, you know, you know what your daddy say? Your daddy say, hey, nigga, you cut the turkey this year because of that stupid <laughs> shit. Damn. <laughs> you say the prayers. Say. You, you say grace. Damn. You say grace. Let's all hold hands, y'all. That's what your daddy say to your punk ass. <laughs> Damn. But you bro. weak and you're defiled. Read on. But me commendeth us not to God. Stop. It's not what we eat that commends us to God, because some some of those meats are lawful. You got beef, goat, or a chicken. All that stuff is lawful. However, it's sacrificed unto an idol. Read on. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if uh -huh. we eat not are we the worse. Because it may be lawful. Read on. But take what? heed, take heed, lest by any means. This liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Stop, stop, stop. What in the hell does that mean? It says, take heed, lest by any means, this liberty of yours, what's the liberty? That you know and you have the knowledge of Christ. That's the liberty. You know Christ is a black man. You know we're supposed to be keeping the commandments with faith in Christ. That's the liberty. Read on. This liberty become a, become a stumbling block to them that are weak. It could become a stumbling block because you so damn weak, you're going to set a horrible example by eating that turkey dinner. You're going to set a horrible example by saying Merry Christmas on Christmas Day to everybody. Even though they know you're an Israelite, they're going to look at you like you're a punk and you're weak. Yeah, I knew you were just going through the motions. You ain't going to believe that Israelite stuff. Hey, get some more turkey. 
That's what your family's going to do to you. They're going to know that you're freaking weak. And you don't have no belief. You don't believe in what you've been kicking. You understand? Christ is not your savior. And you're not in the truth. We brought that out like two days ago. Some of y'all keep kicking y'all in the truth. Read on. Watch this. For if any, for if any man see thee which hath knowledge, sit at the stop, meat. Stop, stop. What do you have knowledge of? You got the knowledge of Christ. Now they see you sit at what? Sit at meat in the idol's temple. Here you are at mama's house. The whole house decorated with Christmas, Christmas, um, Christmas, uh, uh, damn. uh decorations. The, yeah. The, the decorations all over the damn house. Pil candy, pilgrims. Candy, Thanksgiving candy, pilgrims. Big ass tree hanging. Got all kinds of ornaments on it. That's the, that's the idol's house. That's the idol's temple. Read on. Shall not the conscience of him, which is weak, be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. Guess what? Here you come to Christmas dinner. The, the, the idols are everywhere. But you've been teaching your little cousin. Your little cousin been hearkening unto you. Your little cousin believes the shit you kicking. Let's see what happens. Read. Damn. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish. Wait, 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 wait. You missed something. You Damn. Missed something. You missed something. Read it again from 10. 10 and 11. Verse 10. 11. Verse 10. For if any man see thee which hath knowledge, sit at meat in the idol's temple, uh -huh. shall uh -huh. not the conscience of him which is weak be That's emboldened to eat those things? Read on. Be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols. So, and through wait, thy wait, knowledge... Wait, slow down, slow down, slow down. Now your cousins see you eating the damn pork sandwich. Your cousin see you eating all the abominable foods with the with the with the damn Christmas shit all over the house. You having a good time drinking eggnog. What uh what's that? What's that? Uh sal the Salisbury cranberry sauce? Cranberry what you think your cousin gonna do? Well, if my teacher did it, I guess it's okay to do. Let's read on. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish. See that? For your whom brother, Christ your died. Your cousin, your cousin you've been teaching, he gonna die. Just like you gonna die, because you taught him a horrible lesson. You was a horrible example of a teacher, of a man of God for that, for your cousin. Read on. But when ye sin so against the brethren, uh -huh. and would dare, and would dare we conscious, ye sin against Christ. Damn. See what the Bible says that is? Damn! When you teach a horrible lesson against your brethren, and you set a horrible example, it's a sin. It's a sin. That's it's heavy, man. Sin. Yeah, last, last verse. Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend... Now, this is what you all should be doing. If meat make my brother to offend... Go ahead. I, I will eat no flesh... While the world standeth, uh -huh. lest I make my brother to offend. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? That man or woman you teaching by example or through the scriptures, now you are responsible for that man. That man, you should not let that, that man see you being a hypocrite. You should not let the one you're teaching see you being a hypocrite. Because what are they going to do? They're going to follow after your example, and eventually they're going to die. Mute my mic. Hey, Goes I back to the scripture. Take, I hope y'all take heed to what was just said. Hey Benjamin, you hey. made him. You made him mad at you now. Hey, go back to the scripture. Hey, Lean upon that. Uh, go ahead, Benjamin. Read, read that after Benjamin. Acts five twenty nine. Go ahead, Benjamin. No, 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 go, go, no, you got it. Hey, the this is all stuff. all of that summed up. Of what Benjamin just said, here's the scripture you lean upon. You don't lean upon your own understanding. Oh, I'm not gonna do it because I know. Nah, I'm not gonna do it this year. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm staying in the house this year. No, nah, I'm not gonna do that. No, uh, uh. Acts five twenty nine. The book of Acts, chapter five and verse twenty nine. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, "We ought to obey God rather than men." All of that of what Benjamin just brought out. That's what you stand on. I'm not doing this stuff no more because I obey God rather than man. And none of that stuff 
is in the Bible. You know what they go hit y'all with? Oh, well, it's a time for family. We could have got yep. together all year. Why we choose to get together on this day that they said we should celebrate on? Why we get together on this day? It ain't in nowhere in the Bible that Jesus was born on December 25th. Hey, hey, Go ahead, Benjamin. Look how crafty the white man is. Look what the white man did. He gave you paid time off. He gave, and then when you get together, we all know our families all stay the same. Thing. Oh, this is the only time of year we can all get together. Let's make it memorable. Let's make it special. We're going to eat a big dinner together. This is the only time I get to see my grandmother, things like that. What have they done? They've made it that you make memories on these evil ass days, and it's all in reverence to yep. the goddamn white man. Then, uh. look at this. You come outside your house, right? You want to go to the store. All the stores are closed, like it's the Sabbath. Everything is closed yeah. for the white man's holidays, but not for God's right. Sabbath, not for the Passover. You can't even, listen, he's made it, so you have to reverence him on his days. That shit crazy, bro. Crazy. Hey, is he be real? Yeah. Can I get a Jeremiah 2, 33? Just back up. Ah, oh, you in the spirit, man. Hey, go ahead. I got one right after you, man. Cold-blooded. <laughs> hey, hey, this is to back up what Benjamin is saying. How you, just read it. You'll see. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? You you rather uh, bow down to your dad, your children, against what God said. Just for them to be happy with you. Just for them to be happy with you. That's a sad thing. When you stand before God and he asks you why you didn't do what I say do. Read. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Mm -hmm. Therefore, hast thou taught also, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? Read that one more time because you messed up. On Ooh, me. man. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 33. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? You're going to do Therefore, the Christmas. You're going to do the, 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 the Halloween, the, the, uh, the Christmas, the, the birthdays, the. Birthdays, the uh, 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 the New Year's. Yep, yep. Uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, uh, what else? Valentine's Day. All these, all these Easter. wicked days. Read. Therefore, hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? You have Sheesh. taught them their ways. You didn't even teach them against it. You say you stand for God, but Damn. you doing Christmas. But you say you stand for God. That's what hey, and check this. The, mm -hmm. And how did they teach them? By your actions. You didn't go around right. and tell them, hey, right. hey, let's go celebrate birthdays. Hey, y'all, let's go celebrate uh, Christmas. No, you showed up. <laughs> you showed up over Grandmama's house, and they saw you come in, and right. you taught them through your right. actions. Right. You asked for the big bowl of potato salad or whatever. <laughs> you, 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 you asked for, give me an extra potato salad. Crab cakes, the crab cakes. <laughs> The crab cakes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a big piece of turkey. Can I have some seconds? Hey, get that in um Psalm 94, 16. Because when it, now, how's all that summed up to? Because this is one thing y'all going to learn. God is, um he's about the drama. I'm going to just say that. God's about that <laughs> drama. He liked that. When he see, he sits in, up on the, on the throne in the heavens, Jesus Christ, and he says, I'm going to see what he's going to do. Is he going to turn away from that and then piss everybody off and follow me? And when you do, he up there cheering with the angels like, yes, they are pissed off at him. Yes, we got one, y'all. One more added to the, to, the late, uh, to the time. We're getting closer. He turned away and pissed everybody off. Yes, Christ is about that drama. Here's the proof of it. Psalm 94, verse 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Guys, hey, that's drama. Evildoers ain't easy to get along with, y'all. Evildoers are everywhere. You're, they're all around you. And when you rise up against them, it's going to be some smoke in the city. 
they ain't gonna love you like, oh, hey, man, this, he, um, yeah, <coughs> thank you for rebuking us for, uh, telling us that Christmas was of the devil. Oh, we thank you for reminding us that Thanksgiving is the slaughter of the Native Americans. Thank you. We appreciate you making us feel bad for eating this turkey. Thank you. <laughs> They're going to be pissed off. But God's about that drama. Because he said what? Read it again for him. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? God said, who going to rise up? Who going to stand up? Who's about that smoke? Who about that drama? Who going to stand up for me upon the earth? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Man, God's about all that drama. God ain't about getting along with everybody and letting bygones be bygones and oh, uh, we go celebrate it. We know this is wrong, but we go hey. come together for family. Shit. Go ahead, Benjamin. Hey, 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 Z. Hey, brother Dawi said, my dad invited me to Thanksgiving dinner. He said, son, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but we just gonna have a meal with the family. Listen. <laughs> Come on, man. That, listen, y'all. This is how family does. They will do anything to get you, to bring you back to Caesar. You understand? They're going to tell you, oh, no, we're just going to eat because we're family. Oh, no. Right. So why you got to do it on that <clears throat> end? If it ain't mm -hmm. that particular holiday, why are we getting together on that particular day? Y'all got to Hey, hey. Up, man. Yeah, yeah. Bitch, you know how much bullshit it is? Tell them, um, when, when's that Thanksgiving uh, is on on Thursdays of every year, and then Halloween is on the uh, 31st or something. Tell them like, hey, um, I'm not, I'm not celebrating Thanksgiving uh, this Thursday. How about we celebrate on Friday and, <laughs> and see what they say to y'all? They, say, they right. like, what? No, we ain't doing that. Right, it's still a day off. Why you gotta wait till Thursday? It's still a day off. Right. There you go. You off? You got all weekend off? They gave you four days off. Watch it. They're going to they say, no, nah, we're not doing that. That's going to prove to you that they celebrate white man's holidays. And it's not about coming together as family. White man gave us his day off. He told us that it's OK. We don't care what God says. We're going to follow man rather than God. That's why God sits in the heaven and say, who's going to rise up for me? Go ahead. So in other words, you got no faith in God. You got faith in the damn white man. There you go. So that's what God about that smoke, y'all. So all of this stuff coming up and Halloween's in a few days. God say, who going to rise up for me? Who going to stand up against the workers of iniquity? They are in the midst of sin uh, uh, willingly. It's not like they people do it. You tell you come on now. You tell me people don't know that Halloween is out after the worshiping of, of the dead and the devils and Satan. They made it joyful and uh, 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 fun to do when they started introducing all these other costumes. And, uh, oh, I'm not dressing up like a ghoul or a goblin like the dead. I'm dressing up like a whore. I'm going to dress up like a whore maid. I'm dressing up like a whore nurse and have my titties out. Come on, man. It's the workers of iniquity. Whether you try to do it that way or whether you're honoring the dead in what you do or you're honoring other gods when you dress up like Superman and Batman and uh, Aquaman and Iron Man, those ain't nothing but ancient Greek gods with different names on them. Look it up. Those are different names. Those are Greek gods with different names made in to... Uh, uh, cartoon characters. Superman is supposed to be Zeus. Uh, Batman is like Mars, the god of war, or some stuff like that. Look it up. Aquaman is uh, what? What's that dude they had with the water in Greek Greek mythology? Damn, I forgot. He had the sword. The um, the, yeah. the fork, the fork thing. I'm yeah, Poseidon. cause Poseidon. Poseidon. There you go, Aquaman. Aquaman got that same fork in his hand. He ain't nothing but Poseidon, and they just gave him a name, Aqua Water Man. That is Poseidon, a Greek god. Hey, man, the devil, the depths of Satan is deep, and he uses your family that he already got control of that God ain't dealing with yet. 
he uses it to draw a lot of you all back to it because you get tired uh, of uh, keeping the commandments of God. They become grievous to you. But but God got a way to escape where your brothers and sisters that know they Israel, they get together. Uh, every time this stuff come around, we all get together so you can get away from your wicked family that's trying to draw you back into the world. God got a way to escape. He he. He got it for you. All you got to do is is take God's hand and and engulf yourself into it. So that old man that's in you doesn't rise up over the spiritual man that is weak in you right now and draw you back into that evil. Hey, I mean, my hey, mic. Hey, also, brothers and sisters, if you if your family saves you a plate of food. They save you some mac and cheese, your your grand your your favorite aunt's best piece of apple pie. You used to love when she made that apple pie. You used to love when she made that sweet potato pie. You don't eat none of that shit. That thing is sacrificed unto idols, y'all. Right. right. You understand? Right. Don't fall for the for the okie dokie, as my deacon says. Don't fall for it. All right. They know you don't partake. They know you're not at the dinner table. They talking shit about you not being at the table. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to leave you some leftovers and put it in the fridge for you. And they're going to put Damn. your name on it. Damn. Don't fall for it. Stand strong. Hold that. Give me Joshua 1 and 8. Give me Joshua. The book of Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of no, thy no, mouth. No, 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 not that, not that. Um, the one that says, have good courage. It's like further down. Yes, sir, have verse 9. Courage. Give me that. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Slow be down, strong. Slow down, brother, slow down. I need you to slow down and give me some power, yes, bro. Come on. Yes, sir. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. Have, I, have not I commanded thee, be strong. Be what? And of be strong. God said and of, be strong, damn it. That's be right. Strong. Be strong. Stop being a punk, man. So what your mama mad? So the hell what? She'll get over it. So right. Your daddy mad. Tell him yeah, get the fair, damn law and repent. Tell him that. Yeah. So the hell what? Let the wicked be mad. There's no rest for the wicked anyway. They always all right, mad. All right. it's, it's let the ass be mad. So it's not that serious. Hell? Just chill. chill hey, chill. hey, who's talking, man? Who's talking? Uh, Matt's talking. Hey, Matt, shut stage. up. Throw that shut nigga up. off stage, man. Throw his ass off stage. Uh, is that that Eater Mike? Get your ass off the stage, man. Get your ass <laughs> look, hey, man. hey, look at, look at it, look at it, Benjamin. Hey, Benjamin, that Eater Mike could not take us casting down his imaginations of that damn hey. Thanksgiving and Halloween. He had to come up and say something. Hey. Let's talk to Matt in a minute, all right? We want to see if Matt celebrates these holidays, right? Hey. But let's... Uh, <laughs> let us, read it again, read it again, bro. Matt messed me up. Now, come on. <laughs> come on, come on, Rita. Have not I commanded thee, be strong. Be what? Be strong. The and of a good courage. Strong and of good courage, black man. In other words, That's what it. you got to do, brothers, have some damn faith. Have some faith, man. Don't take hey. no more Christmas gifts. Don't take no turkey dinner. Take none of that shit. Ahead, faith, faith and balls. Yeah. And, 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 and sister, 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 sisters, you have some, uh, uh, you, you, you stand <laughs> strong in the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Sisters, you oh, sisters, you crazy. big Woman panties on, man. Put your big girl panties on. <laughs> right. Be, right. We know how y'all are with your mamas. You always want to be under your mama titty. To hell with your mama titty, man. Hey. To hell with that. <laughs> Grow up. Put your big girl drawers on. <laughs> Stop being under. You, you, ain't a, you ain't a baby no more. You can't let your mama coddle you no more. Go ahead, y'all. Hey, get Jeremiah 2 and 11. This is the back of GB Real and, and, and Benjamin. Th these nations, like he was breaking up Thor, 
and all these uh mobile whatever i don't know i don't know y'all so don't 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 kill me mobile marvel co- uh comics or whatever you call it uh uh yeah thor thor is uh what is thor again i who knows what ancient greek god thor is i think it's thor bro i think it is thor is that what okay it's thor. so he's yeah. actually the god of thunder yeah there we go yeah. he's the god of thunder thor yeah. yep go ahead uh king it shows you that they still worship their gods to, the, to this day. They don't give their gods up, but true blacks and Hispanics, y'all give your God up in a minute. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. Have a nation changed their gods? Had the nation Which changed I- their gods? They have not changed their gods to this day. When you look, when you, when you look up these these uh heroes and everything it goes back to their gods they're still worship they never let them go christmas uh uh halloween all this is linked to old gods uh mother's uh monday tuesday wednesday thursday monday all these things are linked to their old gods read have a nation changed their gods which are yet no gods they're not no gods they got no power in them but you yet serve them you bow down to them you love them read but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit when christmas profit us none of these things profit us hey we man we together. we all we, we do is we broke. broke we broke that's it straight up broke after christmas somebody ask us for some money we'd be like ah oh, i ain't got it ask me Ask me in about the middle of January. I'll be back on my feet. That's crazy. Hey, y'all, y'all wanna, y'all wanna, hey, bring Matt back up. Let's talk to Matt real quick and see what the hell he wants. Go ahead, Matt. He's up. He's up. Matt. Go ahead, Matt. I don't see him. He just came up. Hold on. I don't see him there. Hold on a second. Let me pull him up. Come on up, Matt. Wait a minute. Let's, talk to, let's talk to pure Idumia. All right. Idumia, where are you? <laughs> where is he? Where is he? Matt, go ahead and raise your hand. You want to come on stage? Come on stage. I just see Hey, him. give me that. Give me that script about uh Paul talking about when he was a child. Before we talk to uh Esau Edom. That's first and last name. Esau Edom. His middle name, Idumia. Uh, read that for, for me, brother, uh, when I was a child. It's in Corinthians somewhere. I, can't, I ain't got my Bible open. First Corinthians 15. And yeah. uh, look around 12. The book of First Corinthians. Chapter 13. In verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. Now, look at this. We all know we all was kids. We all grew up through this stuff. When we was children, Santa Claus uh, was was okay. Halloween, we ate candy. Whatever, birthdays, we got gifts. When we was a child, those things, okay, you was a child. Read on. I understood as a child. And I thought as a child. Uh huh. But when I, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You got to put away the shit, man. <laughs> and and don't pass Damn. it to your kids either. Yeah, we get that in First Samuel. I think that's two or second. Whatever, First Samuel two. Now, but put that stuff away, man. You're a grown ass man. Grown ass woman out here celebrating Hall- uh, Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving, you know that shit is evil. Put away them childish ass things and grow up. Grow up in God. Not, and not, that means since you know it's evil, your kids shouldn't be celebrating it either. Now, now, now y'all grown up, dr- grown women dressing like Suki Hana for Halloween and Sexy Red for Halloween. <laughs> shit. <laughs> You want First Samuel chapter two verse three? No, get uh get Second Samuel twelve thirteen. 
Yes, sir. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 12 and verse 3. 13. Chapter 12 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. and, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And that's what we and all Nathan, should say. Hold on, hold on. Slow down. We all should say that. You know, we have sinned. When you we tell you the scriptures, we showing you what's in the Bible, you should look at yourself. You cannot find none of the things that you do or you live. I, if I guarantee you, if I ask you, can you measure your life up with the Bible? You cannot do it. The things that you do in life, you can't measure it up with the Bible. Nothing you do, God say do. You do the opposite of what he say do. When you find out you're doing wrong, you're supposed to say, I have sinned. Just like David doing right here. Read. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord hath put away thy sin. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not die. You should put away your sins so you won't die, so you can be forgiven. You have to admit your sins, stop doing it, and God will forgive you so you won't die. Hey, where's that at um, in Proverbs about uh, not admitting your sin? What God go do? That Proverbs. Uh, what is that? 28, 28 and 8? 13. Yes, sir. And verse 13. 13. Yep, go ahead. Yes, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Covereth means make excuses. Like King is saying, God wants you to say, I have sinned, God. I was celebrating this stuff. And the thing is, brothers and sisters, coming out of that, out of that stuff, ain't no, it ain't nobody on this stage with green beans that ain't did that already. We had to tell God, I have sinned, God. I was wrong. This stuff is evil. I have done evil in thy sight. Forgive me. That's what we, we all had to do it. You all got to go through that because that's the way God commanded us to come to him. You ain't got a special relationship where you go say something different to God and be <laughs> on good terms with him. No, he wants you to say, I have sinned. Just like King David who was a man after God's own heart, he had to say it when he did wrong in God's eyes. God, I have sinned. You got to admit that and not make excuses because God says he that covers his ways. Read it again, Proverbs. He that covers his sins shall not prosper. If you make excuses for your sins, it tries, oh, it ain't nothing wrong with it. It's family getting together. It used to be about the uh, the Satan. It we used to it be evil. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Now, now we made it into a family day. It's not. It's not what right. It is. Now we're gonna use it as a family day. Yeah. Now celebrating New Year's and having drinks is to thank God for another year. No, you're not. You're worshiping the God of Janus. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Christmas, celebrating Christmas is worshiping Nimrod. Uh, 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 celebrating Thanksgiving is your honor and your oppressors that murdered your own brothers. That's what you're doing. Halloween, you're worshiping the guy Sam Hain. Sam Hain, you can look up the stuff. Birthdays, you're worshiping Satan. So you make excuses for it. God said you will not prosper. Read it one more time for the people. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Uh-huh. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That mercy is the same thing that you read about with, with David and Samuel. Where it says God has not added that sin to you. Because he did what? He told God, I have sinned. He didn't make excuses. He didn't say, oh, what? Who? Uriah who? Well, he got killed in battle. I don't know how he got up to the front of the line. Oh, I don't know what happened, God. He didn't do that. He said, God, I have sinned. Straight up. Go back and read that again. That's a good script, King. 
Pull yeah. it out for me again, man. Hey, I, I, before we go back, because uh, you made me think of the scripture while you was going in, bro. Get, I'm, we're going to go right back to that other scripture. Get Ezekiel 18, starting verse 30. This is this the is to back you up what you're saying. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, according to saith what? the Lord God. What? According to, to his, his ways. ways, according to his ways, your doings, what you do. It's not according to what God told you to do. It's what your ways, what you want to do. You, you are brought for a price. You will pay for it. Christ died for you. So you can't do what you want to do. Israel, you belong to the Lord. It's over. I, I don't know what to tell you. Read on. Repent. Do what? And turn. What? Repent. The Bible say repent. The same thing David did. Repent. Re. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Re. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So iniquity, Christmas going to be your, your ruin. Thanksgiving going to be your ruin. Damn. All these false holidays, holy days, whatever, the things that, that you love, that your 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 grandma and all them, what they call it? Uh, um, I don't know. They just call it uh, come together night or whatever. We just coming together because they don't call it family call time. It giving, yeah, family time. They don't they don't want to call it Thanksgiving no more because a lot of people is speaking against it. So they want right, to say, right. oh, we we just doing it for the family, but you're still doing it in the spirit of Thanksgiving. That's right. You, you still doing it. You still get the, the gravy. You still get the turkey. You still doing the ritual. It's still the same ritual. You can't hey, just hey. Damn. And you know damn well all you and your family are saying happy Thanksgiving. Exactly. You know yep. Well yep. You are. Yep. At your jobs. You know yep. you, you know it's evil. And and your your boys your boys say happy Thanksgiving to you uh, the, the, uh Wednesday before Thanksgiving, before work is over. And you say it right back to him. You know you too you too scared not to. Right, right. And, and, and if this is this is baffled me because I like I said before, it ZB real and them said we done this stuff, so we know how it goes. You have a dog on Muslim <laughs> at Thanksgiving. You got all these different religions. Your cousin a Muslim. You a Christian. Somebody else a Buddhist. All at Thanksgiving. This shit is hey. weird. Hey, 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 King. Yes, sir. Like I mentioned on, I think it was Tuesday. No, Monday. If you so damn tough and you know it's evil, you know when you go to orientation, you start a new job, and they tell you, hey, uh, nobody, um, we cannot talk about religions and different customs. Right, it's, right. A, it's offensive to some, some, some other races and religions and all of that, so we leave that stuff alone. So why the hell do you have a, a Christmas tree in the damn hey, lunchroom? Hey, why they, the hell hey. do we set up? Why, why do y'all have a, a Thanksgiving right. lunch right before right before Thanksgiving right. on Wednesday? Right. Why do you do that? Because we're not supposed to offend each other. You know you got Hispanics. You got um. Uh, Native, Native Americans. Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why you don't? Why don't you uh, um, honor that? Evil as hell, bro. Hey, Benjamin, they have the whole building decked out with with lights. Yep. yep. Uh, giving people cards. They give people cards. Um, they give you cards. Gold. Yes. The little, yes, the gift yes. cards. They, they give it to you. Hey, at what hey, hey. matter of fact, on Thanksgiving, remember, sometimes the job will give you a whole turkey, bro. I got a whole turkey right. from the job one time. Right, bro. right. They give out turkeys. They give out that. They give a dinner. They give a dinner that week before. That week before they give. If you if you go to one of them um jobs like that, you know them good jobs. They give you a dinner a week before. You understand? And and they pay you for taking the day off. They give you that yep. day off and they pay you. Don't forget the Christmas bonus. Yep. So so these are the things that. We love, we, 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 uh, we don't want to deny those things, but we deny God. Read on. 
Verse 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions mm -hmm. whereby ye have transgressed. Mm -hmm. And make you a new heart. And make and you a new heart. How are you going to make a new heart? You got to come back to God. How you, the new heart is going to the mind. How are you going to make a new mind? How are you going to think upon the things you're supposed to think upon? By coming back to the Lord, coming back to his, coming back to the scriptures. It's going to tell you how to live. It's going to show you how to be a husband, uh, a wife, a, a, a child, a father, a mother. This, this, the Bible is going to teach you how to worship him, how to worship God. Just like to, to those people who are out there married, if your if your wife was allergic to roses, you will not give your wife roses because you know she's allergic to it. That's what y'all do to God. Y'all think y'all can just serve God any kind of way. Cain thought that too. Cain thought he could just give God what he wanted to give him. No, he gave him orders. You supposed to do what he told you to do. Damn, that's heavy right there. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. And that's that. What we do, we want to do what we want to do and say, oh, that that that's that's going to please you, God. That that's not what he say. Read on. Verse 31, cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? He don't want you to die. He, he, just look at the question. He say, why would you die? Why would you die? The Lord, people think the Lord is unfair. The, the, what, hold on. Jump up to verse, uh, what, 29? Uh, uh, yes, 28, start at 28. The book of Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 28. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live mm -hmm. and shall not die. Agree. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. You see that? They gonna tell God he ain't fair. When God told him from the beginning, when he told him from the beginning that, look, do this and you're going to live. We got a lot of nerve. We got a lot of nerve, man. Even to this day, we y'all know we're supposed to be dead, right? You know we're supposed to be dead. The only reason why we're living because he kept his promise. We didn't keep the promise. Right. That's the only reason why. So we ought to be thankful. You understand? Even even us on the phone right now, the spirit is on the men right now to reach you all to come back to him. This is God. This ain't look, this ain't God. My man, my old me, myself, the man that I am, shoot, I want to do what I want to do. But God, that's what's in me, is compelling me to hey, go do this. I want you to get on Clubhouse, go wake my people up. So we can't do what we want to do. That's right. Read Man, on. Good, good point, bro. Read on. Yet say, yet say of the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. He said the oh, way of the Lord is not Israel. equal. This is Israel. The way of the Lord not equal. It's not fair. Read. Hey, 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 I'm oh, sorry. house. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, hold on. King, you know what's so crazy, bro? Yes, sir. It's so, it's so terrible that um, we're ungrateful as hell that when somebody does come and tell you you're an Israelite, you're, you're the greatest people on the planet Earth, you got to keep the commandments. We start trying to justify and come up with ways not to keep the commandments. Right. Oh, no, no, no. Right. Pants is not just for men. They made women's pants now. Oh, oh, I don't have to have a beard on my face. That That's the Old Testament. Now we come up with ways to keep staying in sin. Shit. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Unequal. It's bad. Right. Watch this. Read on. All house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's Kyrie, heavy. You're the one that's unequal. Yeah. Uh, what the hell? God said, no, you I'm ain't right. right. You ain't you, right. I've yeah, been here the whole time. Yourself. I've been here the whole time. 
Y'all left Damn. y'all left him off. Y'all left him. So, you so we Johnny, we we Johnny come lately. Shit. Right. Right. We left him. We we get me uh Jeremiah two and one. We're gonna come back here. Jeremiah two and one. The, the book of Jeremiah, chapter two and verse one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears no, of three Jerusalem. One. Three and one, I'm sorry. Verse three, three one. chapter three, three and one. verse one. They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? The answer is no. That should not happen. That's not that. That's against God's laws. No. Right. Hey, don't no man want no woman because after she done cheated on him and committed adultery. Hell, dog, keep your ass out there in the streets. Right. You you didn't messed all over her face and back and. Oh lord, back. keep it keep it PG, King. Go ahead, man. <laughs> King, come back, King. Shall not. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? It will be greatly polluted. Nobody wants. Nobody's gonna be polluted. Hey, Nobody hey, wants so, it. The king, the king, like you said, you 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 take your wife back, right? And all you can think of when she talks to you, have a conversation with you, is what was on the side of her face. Damn. Oh gosh. Damn. Damn. Oh gosh. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Damn. Damn. Hey, this is what we. Hey, hey, what was that song that uh uh Trey? It was Trey. Whatever Trey, I don't know. I forget his name. Trey Songz. He had a song called. Well, no, it was Tyrese. He had a love faces or one of them did. I know what you're talking about. It was one of them. Man, ain't no way, man. Nasty. Ain't no way. Your ass belongs to the streets. But go ahead, King. Read on. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Uh huh. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Listen, God said we have played the harlot with many lovers. We have left the Lord. We played the harlot. We was, we was, we that harlot. Hey, hey, you know what them many lovers are? Baptist, yes. Methodist, yes. Pentecostal, yes. Jehovah Witness, Catholic, yes. uh, uh, witches, uh, uh, spiritual, uh, Confucius, Islam, Asiatic black man. Yes. You played the whore with everything. Egyptologist. Go ahead, King. That's crazy. That's crazy. And we unequal. But God been there the whole time. But read on. But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. The Lord standing strong. He's like, look, yet turn again to me. I'm telling you to come back. After all we've done to him, He's still saying, come back to him. And we're going to say, he unequal? He ain't Man, right? that's crazy. Man, man, get the hell out. You, you, the, 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 the dude this morning, I can't remember his name. The guy this morning, he was mad or just, uh, with glasses. I can't remember his name. He was mad. He was going, you know, A.O. was being patient with him. He was mad. Oh, that was uh, E. Liddy. Yeah, he was, what he was saying, he was mad at uh, the Lord for, you know, chosen or not. Nah, uh no no he, he, he couldn't understand why God yeah why God would create somebody that he hates right and then like it's God's will listen you trying to say that God is unequal when you say that people have to, they don't even know what to like I'm so angry when people say that right now y'all I I, I don't even know how to answer that. You cannot fix your mouth. You cannot fix your mouth against God who made your spirit and say, why you made me like this? Who who are you to make me like this? We're the only people who talk back. How are you going to talk back to God? How? Prideful. <laughs> How are you going to talk back to God, man? You know he can kill you? You know God is about that? You know he's about that life? Is you crazy? Read on. Verse 2. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places mm -hmm. and see where thou hast been laying with. You, you've been, look, see where have you not been. You've been so, you, it's easy to see where you have not been. You've been so many places. This is easy for, look, 
We are the whores of the nation. No other nation left there, guys. It's just us. We are the whores of all the nations. We are the, we are the, man, listen, we ought to stop what we're doing and reassess ourselves and look at if we live in accordance to God. Look at your life, brother, sister. Read the scriptures and say, am I doing this? And whether it be sin or not sin, it, the Bible going to show you. Paul say, I would not have known lust unless the law show me what it was. So you have to go back to the Bible. Stop listening to these pork chop eating pastors telling you the, the, the Old Testament is done away with. That's a lie. Your life is in the Old Testament. The history, where you come from, is in the Old Testament. That's where you, no one can tell, listen, listen, listen to me, y'all, listen to me. Think about this, think about it. We don't, we come from, we come from slaves, the black Spanish Native American, we came over here in slavery. They got rid of our records, right? They got rid of our records. The only one we can trust in is the Lord. So we have to right. go back to the Bible. We have to go back to the Bible. You can't go to Ancestry.com. They can't go past your grandma. Right, 23 and me. You can't go past your grandma, your great great grandma. You can't get, they got to have they got to have the other person blood to even match you up. They, come on, y'all. Stop playing. Go the Bible told us that we was gonna go into slavery on slave ships. The Lord said that we when you read Deuteronomy 28, 15 and down, the curses, it fits us, man. You cannot lie. You you can see it. It's just because you want to stay in your sin. You want to stay in your sin. Everything you say against the Bible is wrong. You don't have nothing to back you up. It's all what white man told you. Why you why why are we gonna keep on listening to them? Why we keep listening to the white man? He's a liar. He's a deceiver. Because he, he give him money. He give him money and de and time off. Right. They love him. He told you. That Christopher, Chris, Christopher Columbus found this land. This is this was in schools. We thought, I thought, and the rest of us, the schoolmates, thought that Christopher Columbus found the school. Not only, I was, you know, we didn't see the lie. We didn't see it. He 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 he, he came with gifts. So hold on, he came with gifts to the natives, right? But he found this land. Nobody questioned that. Nobody questioned that when it was in school. <laughs> right, like, how did he find it if it was somebody there to give gifts yeah. to? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But <laughs> we never questioned nothing. it. We never questioned it. But here come the Lord to this, to today telling you, you the Israelites, the best thing ever that walked the face of the earth, that Christ had the same blood you have. You going to question that? But the white man told you you was a nigger. You was a, 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 a what they call you, a fifth of a man, what that is? Two thirds of a man, whatever they called you. Three, three, three fifths. Three, three, three fifths of a man. You know what hey, I'm saying? Hey, 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 And he also said he's God's chosen people. Right. Don't forget that. And you believe nobody, that? Nobody you, had a problem with it. Right. And you don't question the the the, the Bible said that the heathen was going to overtake the land until he came back. I, and these are Christians believe that these people that's in the land today. Are Israelites? They are God. It, it makes me sick. How you think those pale, uh, uh, curly sh sh temple rocking at the wall is God's chosen people? I, and nobody you, questions it. Nobody I, says nothing. Nobody asks for proof. Nobody says, "Hey, show me where in the Bible you guys are God's chosen people." Make it line up. Nobody that, that shows Nothing. that shows they are on top. When nobody question hey. you, hey. and if they do question you, it's called anti-Semitism. You know why? It's because these these pastors, whether it be in Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, all the way here to America, they telling you not to read the Old Testament. Because when you That's read that Old bad. Testament. You'll come, you, you'll find out real quick, like, yeah, this shit don't match up with them. You, you how, was they, how was they slaves in Egypt when ain't no hieroglyphs?
hieroglyphs of them ever being there. And the, and the Egyptians wrote everything down in stone or on paper. We call it papyrus at that time. I don't yeah. see them in none of this stuff. They could last for well, years in a, in a desert. Man, city. it says it says that they went into slavery to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was an Ethi Ethiopian. <laughs> I ain't never seen no history of white folks enslaved to damn Nebuchadnezzar. It says they were slaves to the Persians. Damn, I ain't never seen no history of white folk being slaves to the Persians. Damn, it says that they was conquered by Rome. I ain't never seen no history of white folk enslaving other white folk in Rome. I, where's that stuff at in the history books? You don't see it. You see yourself, though. Go ahead, King. You know what they're going to tell you? We saw it in the Ten Commandments. They saw it. Right. Get your hands out of here. I saw it in a movie. Get your hands out of here. I saw it in a movie. Man, yeah. stop it, man. Y'all read that Old Testament, brothers? The Bible is a history book for us, by us, to us, so we can trace our way back to our Father, God, so we don't make the same mistakes that our ancestors made. That's why God left it there, so we can read it, so we understand what not to do in order so God does not stay pissed at us. Get that in Psalm 78 real quick. And look what it says. Because we got to come, come out of it thinking, oh, yeah, I'm just reading the New Testament. Uh, I'm just going to there. Man, it's a reason why they tell you don't read that Old Testament. They never want you to find out who you are. That the Nigerians, the Ghanaians, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Democratic Congo, South Africa, we in North Africa, in Ethiopia, we in Sudan. The Israelites are spread all throughout Africa and in the Americas. When God said he was going to put us on slave ships and scatter us, he meant it. And he did it. But read that Psalm 78. The book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 1. Give ear, O my people to my law man look what guys this is yeah i want y'all to hear this because i know i didn't hear this stuff when my eyes were spiritually closed and my ears were spiritually shut i didn't hear or see how many times in the bible god always said my people my people my people my people damn you ever notice that in that Old Testament, it's always my people, my people, my people. Why don't you see it as much in the New Testament? Why don't you see that? Because Christ ain't got to say that because he's talking to those same people in the New Testament. You're reading about what's happened, what was prophesied to happen in the Old Testament. You're reading about it in the New Testament. So Christ don't have to say, my people, my people, my people, over and over again. He's talking directly to them. Read that again. My people, give ear to what? Give ear, oh, my people, to my law. God wants you to hear his laws. Open your ear to the laws of God. I never knew how much God wanted us to obey his laws until I started reading the Bible for myself and not listening to these damn two-bit hustling teaching for higher pastors. God keeps saying, my people, my law. My people, my law. How does Jesus come on the scene now and say, I'm for all people and you ain't got to keep the law no more. Make that shit make sense, y'all. Don't it don't no make sense. no it don't make no damn no sense, sense that God sent His Son to now. I want you to be for all people and ha and no law. When the whole Old Testament is talking about my people, my law, but I want you to go and do something different. Change all this shit up, God, uh, Jesus. It don't make sense. It don't make biblical sense, especially when Christ said, "I came not to do my own will." But the will of my father that sent me. Can't make this up, bro. My people give ear to my law. Keep reading. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Uh-huh. 
I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Those are the those are the prophecies. Those are the wisdom books. That's the book of Job. That's the book of Psalms, Ecclesiastes, the Songs of Solomon. Those are the parables that Jesus was speaking in the New Testament where he said, I will speak unto you in a parable. A certain man had two sons. One went off and spent all his money and riots his living. And then he thought upon himself that at my father's house, all the servants have something to eat. I will go and return unto my father. He spoke to him in parables, but he's speaking about the house of Judah and the house of Israel right. returning right. back to God. That's a dark saying of old that Jesus was speaking about in the New Testament. Hey, you just so keep reading. You just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Keep reading that song. Verse three, which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us. Our fathers have told us about our ancestors, the righteous of our people. They taught their kids the laws of God. That's what we're supposed to do in the eyes of God to make him pass down his laws and teach the kids from generation to generation. Because something's going to happen. Keep reading. It's going to tell you what happens. We will not hide them from their children. Stop! Hey, don't hide these. Hold on! Don't hide these laws from your children. Don't hide Passover from your kids. No, stop hiding this stuff from your kids, and you teach them Christmas. You hide tabernacles from your kids, and you teach them Halloween. You had you hide in Day of Atonement, but you're teaching them birthdays. You hide the laws of God from your kids, and you teach them the ways of what of the of the white man. How evil are you as a parent to not teach your kids about God's laws? Don't hide them from your kids. Tell them who that white man is. Tell them who that Asian is, that Arab is. These are not the people of God. You are, the cho you are of the chosen people of God. You are special. You are above all people. Your hair is better than everybody. And God made sure you look like him when you came down on earth from the heavens. Tell your kids that. Stop trying to make them damn fit in with every. No, don't. We ain't tell you to teach them to go in there and disrespect everybody, but let them know you better than every other nation on this earth. Hold your head up high and don't let nobody talk about your black skin and your and your godly hair when you go into that school because they both came from God and He looked like you and you look like Him. That's what these kids need to hear. Don't hide it from them. Keep reading. Verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Uh -huh. And his strength. Read. And his wonderful works. That he and has his, done. Show, show, God, show your kids the wonderful works of God. Stop teaching your damn kids about a fat white man sliding down some chimney, flying all over the earth. With some demonic ass reindeer. Show the glorious things that God did for his people. Show them what he's doing right now. How God pulled his spirit back on the earth. And black man and Hispanic man and native Indian man and women are repenting. And they standing up as the whole army of God. The man look like God now. They teaching thus saith the Lord. They go out on the streets and battle for the, uh, p the souls of our people against the wickedness of the world. Look at the great works of God. How they used to be niggas, but now they prophets. Show your kids that. Keep reading. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. Uh-huh. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. For what reason? Why should you teach your children the laws of God and not the ways of America? Read. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born. Uh-huh. Should arise. Uh -huh. And declare them to their children. You supposed to teach your children so they teach their children. And therefore we become that righteous nation that God has always ordained us to be. What happens is that you teach your kids Christmas and Thanksgiving. And they pass that shit down generation to generation. 
restoration. How do we know it? Because you were celebrating Thanksgiving just like your mama and them. Just like your damn grandpa was doing it. You doing the same thing, and now you call it tradition. It's our family tradition, because that evil shit been passed down to you. Excuse my French, so y'all, they got Christian ears. It been passed down to you from generation to generation. And you do it and call it family tradition. No, God said, you're supposed to make my laws known to your kids, so they'll teach their kids, and they'll follow my ways and not the ways of this world. Keep reading. That they might set their hope in God. We ain't got no hope in God no more. Your kids got hope in Santa Claus, a white man. Your kids got hope in Thanksgiving. Your kids got hope in birthdays. Your kids got hope in damn New Year's. Your kids got hope in Jordans, damn. in Cardi B, in clothes, in weave for these little girls. These little girls got handfuls of weave out here, man. Learning to hate themselves from a young age, and you teach them that as a parent, cause you buy the shit to put in their hair. You buy the umbrellas for them little girls. You buy them Jordans that they don't even deserve. You teach them the, the evil ways. You, as a parent, cause your ass is evil. Keep reading. You think you're good cause you give them all this stuff, and and you're celebrating all this stuff, but you're actually evil as shit. Keep reading. That they might set their hope in God and uh -huh. not forget the works of God. Read. But keep his commandments. That's what God wants you to teach your kids. But you first got to do them yourself. You got to keep the commandments because your kids ain't going to hear everything you say, but they're going to watch everything you do. You're going to teach your kids by your actions to follow God. Keep reading. And might not be as their father's. A Which were what? Stubborn, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Hold on. They was what? A stubborn and rebellious generation. That's what our people are. We've been that way. Every time you deny the laws of God and follow the ways of man, God says that you are a stubborn and rebellious people. And therefore, what does God do? Slavery. Oppression. Uh, 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 police brutality. Uh, uh, um, um, Jim Crow, uh, apartheid, redlining. genocide, genocide, redlining, concentration camps, benign neglect, benign neglect. And when I say concentration camp, I'm talking about the those things that they call reservations. That's not actually a concentration camp for Native Americans because they send them there to die. Damn. That ain't a place of prosperity. They send them there to die. That's what God has for a stubborn and rebellious generation that every time they vote, a white man come and say, you ain't black if you don't vote for me. And then that same white man get in there and forget all about your ass and give a hundred billion trillion dollars to Ukraine while you niggas over here can't pay rent. You can't afford a house. You making ends meet. You got cut back on what you eat. You can't buy the car you want. You ain't got that 40 acres and a mule that you was promised to your ancestors for building this country. Your Hispanic brothers are upkeeping this country, putting roofs on places in this hot ass sun, picking out those strawberries down in Florida in, in 90 to 5 uh, to uh, 95 degree weather all year round for crumbs. God got that for a stubborn and rebellious generation. And as long as you stay stubborn, everything you do, like it said on color purple, everything you do ain't going to prosper. God going to make sure of it. Because he going to break your ass until you turn to him and stop trusting in man. Get that revelation, uh, uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 5, real quick. Okay. And then I'll wrap it up. I'm going to mic after this. Is he, is he real? Before you go to the, uh, about the kids, did you mm -hmm. see that on Instagram with that woman? She said uh, slut number one, and her friend said what? slut number two. And then she didn't see her daughter. 
and her daughter comes out to the side and say, I'm slut number three, and she realized. Wow. But she realized she did it, and she tried to stop it. She said, no, 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 and she cut the camera off. I'm going to post it in the group so you can see what I'm talking wow, about. Wow, I didn't see that, man. Damn, that's crazy. Read that Jeremiah 17.5. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Stop right there. Black folk, that's your history right there. You the Israelites, according to the Bible. How long have you been trusting in man and not God? Since your inception of when they let you out of slavery. You've been trusting in this white man to fix all your spiritual problems that you got with God. Oh, maybe if we get some education. Maybe if we vote the right person in there, we're going to be good. God said what? Read it for him again. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. God said, I'm going to keep your ass cursed. You're going to be up under curses because you keep trusting in man and not God. You think you're going to vote the right person into office. You think it's going to be your education that's going to change our plight. Oh, if we just ch if we get money. Oh, if we just make generational wealth. God said, I'm going to keep cursing your ass because you trust in man. That's thus saith the Lord. Brothers and sisters, while you're going up in, in that damn church, listening to that prosperity doctrine, all of these lies, getting together every year on these wicked ass holidays, God says, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Lament, Lamentations 4 verse 17. That's us, because we trust in man. We don't trust in God. How do we know we don't trust in God? God said, keep his commandments and live. You say, oh, God ain't going to judge me for wearing pants as a woman. You say, God ain't going to judge me for not having a beard on my face. Oh, I can worship God on any day of the week. I know, I know what the Bible says. I know it says keep the Sabbath day holy. But I'm under the new covenant, and I worship God on the first day of the week. Where he tell you to do that shit at? Where? Show me that in the Bible where God changed. Because cause black folk be quick to say, oh, God is not a man that he should lie. We know God don't change. But you worship on the first day of the week. You don't worship God on, on the seventh day. Read that in Lamentations 4, 17. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes yet failed for our vain help. Uh-huh. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. That nation can't do what? Could not save us. There you go. It used to be ancient Egypt. That's who you used to trust in, that what you wanted to say, save you from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. You wanted the Egyptians to save you. Now you trust in spiritual Egypt, known as America. You trust in these governments, the politicians, and all of you trust in education. God said this is a nation that cannot save you. That's why every every time every time you get to doing something good for yourself, black folk, your ass gets set back. When a white man catch a cold, you catch the flu. Because God said, This is a nation that cannot save you. I know I said it was the last scripture. Let me get one more. <laughs> Hosea 13, 9 and 10. Hosea 13, verse 9 and 10. Look, so God said, this is a nation that cannot save you. So let's see what's the flip side of that. The book of Hosea, chapter 13 and verse 9. Oh, Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself. God is telling you straight up to your face what you done done. He didn't say he did it. You did it. You destroyed yourself when we followed after the ways of man and not after the ways of God. You destroyed yourself. Read on. Thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. In who? In me is thine help. That's why in Jeremiah 17 and 5, God said, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Because God said, In me is thine help. And how does and how's God going? How's God helping us? How's God helping us? Teaching us now that it's the commandments and the faith in Jesus the Christ that He wants us to do to please Him. He's teaching us that Passover is what I want you to do. Day of Atonement. I want you to keep tabernacles. I don't want you to celebrate birthdays. That's how God is helping us. 
Women, I don't want you to put wear pants. Stop it. That's how you've been used and abused. And you're out here getting whored and slutted out and baby mama. I want you to dress like a princess. Put on a dress. I want you to cover up your head. I want you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Brothers, I want you to not to put a beard on your face and look like look like me upon the earth. That's what I want. I want you to dress and put fringes on, border of blue with fringes, so you stand out and everybody know that you're different. You want to be so different anyway in your wickedness. Won't you be different in your righteousness, black folk? Black folk love to have some shit on that ain't nobody got, don't we? Oh, ain't nobody got these. Ain't nobody got these. Only ten of these made. Well, won't you do that shit in righteousness and put on a border of blue and fringes? You always won't be different. What be different how God told you to dress? Keep reading. I will be thy king. Oh, what did God say? I will be thy king. Not Obama, not Biden, not Trump, who you damn black folk love because he give you money. God said, I will be your king. Christ is going to be your king. Keep reading. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? Name it. God put it. Now he put the ball in your court. Who else going to save you? Name them. That's a question for you to answer. You name it. Who going to save you? There you, yeah. He ain't playing. Look, God have made God have made it backed you up into a corner so bad that when you can't you answer that question, you're gonna have to acknowledge ain't nobody gonna help us but God. <laughs> not in this not in this white man that we trusted in named Biden, who told us you ain't black if you don't vote for me, and then y'all put that damn white man in office and he turned his back on you again and gave Chinese people an anti hate bill in the first month that he was in office. He signed a damn executive uh, uh, order as the president for gay rights and ain't gave you niggas nothing. Even open, he even opened up the window for uh, college forgiveness because black folk got college debt. They cut that shit off when all you black people started applying for it. Cut it off. It's gone. God, read that part again, man. Verse 10. Verse 10. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities? And even our own leader, Malcolm X, couldn't do it. Marcus Garvey couldn't save us. Martin Luther King couldn't save us. It ain't no man that going to deliver us out of this bondage and this captivity. It's Jesus the Christ. It's the most high God when he decides to send his son back. Ain't nobody going to save us but God. And he ain't going to save us until we turn to him. And stop trusting in man. Stop following after their ways. And return unto him. Uh, Jeremiah 4 and 1. Damn it. I'm supposed to be last scripture, man. Sheesh. <laughs> let the spirit. Let the spirit. Jeremiah. Remember, man. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord. Return unto me. Stop right and if there. thou wilt. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this. God put an if in front of that because a lot of you all are still going to hear y'all going to hear this word and understand it and know it's true and still not turn from your wicked ways. You are still going to celebrate Halloween in a few days. You are going to give candy out to kids that come by your door. You are still going to celebrate Thanksgiving. You're still going to celebrate Christmas. You're going to celebrate your birthday. You're going to dress like a man and put on pants. You're going to be a lesbian. You're going to be a homosexual. You are going to do the things that you want. You're going to be a dope dealer. You're going to be an alcoholic. You're going to be a whoremonger. You're going to be a scammer. A lot of you all ain't going to return. It's already slated that only one-third of my people are going to change. That's why God put if, because he know all of you will hear this truth and still say, only God can judge me. I, I, I'm going to do me and take it up with God when I meet him. Okay. Damn. Okay. Read that part again. 
It says, if thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. Return to God. Stop returning to the ways of this world. Stop trusting in politics and your damn families uh, that are wicked, that ain't following God. You're returning to be cool and down to earth and easy to get along with and you're trimming your ways to seek love. Stop returning to the damn wicked of this world. God say, return to me. How do you do that? It's by keeping his laws of what he told you to do. Following his son, Jesus Christ, doing the things that Jesus did. And Jesus didn't celebrate Christmas. And that stuff was around during his time. It was called Saturnalia. He was not conducted in orgies like them Greeks did. He wasn't, he wasn't uh, doing the Olympics because the Olympics was on the earth during the time that Jesus was alive. He didn't participate in that shit. He wasn't trying to be the best discus thrower or the best wrestler or track and field. He wasn't doing that. And it was on the earth at the same time Jesus walked the earth. He didn't do it. God said, if you're going to return, return unto me. Keep reading. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shall thou not remove. What does that mean? Then thou shall not remove. If you put away abominations, you will no longer be taken up out of the land. What land? Our homeland, Jerusalem. When the kingdom comes, you won't go out of it again. We are out of our land right now because we chose the abominations of the world instead of the righteousness of God. And therefore, he, he said, you can't be in my home no more. Daddy kicked us out, y'all. He kicked us out of Israel. And now you got white folk living in Israel, bombing the Muslims right now, pretending to be us. They done took our name. Right now, here's the proof of it. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. If you don't believe it, here it is. God kicked us out of Israel because we tr we wanted the abominations of the world and not the righteousness of God. Read that. Look what Jesus said. The book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So who, who is that that will fall? The Israelites. We fell from where? We fell from on high. We fail from glory. We fail from being the children of God. We fail from that. We lost our righteous name to where God said, man, I got to take it from you. I can't let people know you belong to me until you start doing the things that I told you to do. That's why you're known as Jamaicans, Haitians, Puerto Ricans, El Salvador's, Nicaraguans, niggas, bitches, thoughts. Hoes, pimps, drug dealers, Nigerians, Liberians, everything under the sun, but nobody on the earth refers to you as the children of Israel. Nobody refers to you as the sons of God. Nobody refers to you as the princesses of God. They refer to you, uh, they call you black. They call you Kufi. That's what they refer to us as. God said we would fall by the edge of the sword. Keep reading. And shall be led away captive. It's Hold on, read it again because you broke up. I want everybody to hear. Start from the top again. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 24. Oh, my Oh, you're in the Matrix. He in the Matrix to you too, King? And shall be led away captive. And shall be led away captive uh, into all hey, nations. Hey, you in the Matrix, man. To me, you sound like you're in the Matrix. The Book of Luke, chapter 21 there and verse go. 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all there nations. You go. Jesus prophesied about the 1619 slave trade, the 1492 conquest of America, of 
the Americas. God says the ancient Israelites will be led away into slavery into all nations. Brothers and sisters, that's us. And, and, and once we was led away into all nations, who would then live in our land? Read it. And Jerusalem shall the Gentiles. Hold on, you got to read it. Until the time of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles. God, Christ said that Jerusalem would be walked upon by Gentiles. That's who's in the land right now. Those are white folk claiming to be the Israelites of the Bible when Jesus said the Israelites will be in all nations scattered. And they will be there waiting on the return of the Messiah to take them back to their homeland. But the reason, I don't want to forget the point, the reason why we were kicked out of our homeland, God said we chose the abominations of the earth instead of the righteousness of God. We chose those ways, and he put us out. Daddy put us out. So if we're going to return back to God, you got to return back to him by keeping his law and the faith in his son, Jesus the Christ. That's the only way you will get back to God. There's no other way to know him, have a relationship with him, if you do not keep his law. Get that in uh, 1 John 2 and uh, verse 3 and 4. The book of 1 John, chapter 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's the only way you know God. That's the only way you know Christ. If you keep the commandments, you can't say you know God at all if you don't, you don't have a relationship with him if you don't keep his commandments because he commanded his children to keep his laws. That's what the Father told us to do on the earth. I want you to keep the laws that I told you to do. This is how I want you to live. I want you to eat. I want you to dress like this. I want you to worship me like this. You don't know God if you don't keep the commandments. Now keep reading. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That's thus saith the Lord, brothers and sisters. We ain't kept the commandments as a nation. We've been trusting in man. That's why many of us, hell, all of us, never knew God. And it's only few that actually know God on the earth now because they keep the commandments. Outside of that, you are lying to yourself and to the world. But all praise to the most High for repentance. Because you can get to know God if you repent and return unto him and deny the abominations of the world, of man. That's if you want to know God. If you don't, do you do, and do it to the best of your ability until God kill you. Read, read that Revelation, and I'll be done. Hot, hot or cold? Was that Revelation 2 or was that 3? Uh, 3. Read that Revelation 3. This is for those that, because that, remember it said if. So these are the ones that are on the other side of the if that said, man, I, yeah, whatever. That shit sounds good, but, man, I'm going to do me because I'm getting money, and that's what it's about. I'm taking care of my family. I'm getting this money. My soul may be dead on the inside. And I'm searching, and I got a void, but as long as I get money to provide, I'm good with all of whatever y'all saying. Okay, do that. If you are going to be on that side of the if, do it with the best of your ability. Do it with all your strength. Why? Because Jesus said he wants you to. He wants you to be evil to the best of your ability. Read it for him. The book of Revelations. Chapter 3 and verse 15. I know thy works, 
that thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, you ain't cold nor hot. You are, you right in the middle. You you lukewarm. Keep reading. I would that thou wert cold or hot. God said, so Christ when, said I, hold on. Christ said, I wish you was either cold or hot. The hot means on fire for God. The cold means you wicked. You pure evil. Christ said, I wish you was either hot or all the way cold. I wish you was all the way righteous or you be all the way evil. Read. So then, because thou art lukewarm you play and neither cold. Hold on, hold on. You play the middle ground. You got to. You, you you say you believe in God, you believe in Jesus, but you into sodomy. You believe in Jesus, but you're a lesbian. You believe in Jesus, but you smoke cigarettes. You believe in Jesus, but you celebrate Easter. You believe in God, but you worship uh uh you you worship Nimrod on December twenty fifth. You worship God, but you celebrate birthdays. I, you love God, but you wear pants as a woman. You love God, but you got a damn smooth-ass baby face as a man. You love God, but you don't have fringes on. You look warm. You a lukewarm-ass person in the eyes of Jesus Christ. And because you're not all the way evil, and you're or not all the way righteous, what's he say he gonna do? Because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. That means I'm going to kill you. Because you won't choose one side. You just go play the middle ground. Well, God, Christ said, I'm going to make the decision for you. And I'm going to cut you off. And when he comes back, he's going to tell you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. So if you're going to be on the other side of the if, Christ said, I wish you be all the way wicked. Because when you play the middle ground, you teach more people that it's okay to border, to straddle the fence. And it's more evil people being made by your actions. That's what I say the Lord. I mean, my mic, man. I'm hey. done with them kids. Hey ZB, I posted I posted that link up there when you was going about how you know dealing with the kids. Uh, if y'all want to look at it, I posted it up there above us. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Hey man, we gotta wrap it up, man. We about to come back in a little in a few, right? Yep. Yeah, we gotta wrap it up, man. Yep. We be back on tonight around 9:30, 10 o'clock, y'all. We be back on in a few hours. We're gonna take a break. And we'll re up with the with the with the other crew. Uh nine, nine thirty tonight, man. Be be looking out for us. Hey, uh Yosef. Yes, sir. Close us out, man. Yes, sir. All right, let's see let's read Matthews twenty six. Close it out. Hey. Matthew, chapter Hey King, that was some good timing because I just walked back to the phone. <laughs> Hey, all we, we all in the spirit. All praise to the Most High. Go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had an indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily, I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman have done be told for her memorial for a memorial of her. Hey, 
this is why we read the scripture every time we close out um, because we are in order with the scriptures and we make sure that we follow the, the same thing Christ told us to do as a memorial for that sister. Uh, all right. Um, we'll be back again later tonight. Uh, like ZB Real said, seven, I mean, 930, 930. So, all right, 930, 10 o'clock. We'll see y'all then. Shalom, y'all.